Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of what if Naruto became the fire daimyo's harbinger if you enjoy the video then like, share and subscribe and also comment your thoughts as it inspires me to make more such videos and remember to check out my playlist section for other interesting stories. So let's get started. Chapter 3 Waves Savwa, Naruto, Itachi, and Shizune made their way to wave country at high speed knowing time was of the essence if they were to save Genin Team 7 from possible annihilation. While Naruto had doubts they were worth saving, he knew Itachi loved his little brother, and did not want him to die. The trio water walked their way into the country, though it was more like running than walking, and quickly began searching for the address of client Genin Team 7 was protecting. They eventually found it with the lights on, talking was going on in the house, and was clear that there was no danger to its occupants just yet. Should we go in or watch from the shadows? said Shizune curiously from her position in the trees. We might as well go in. We need to see if anyone is wounded, said Naruto with Itachi nodding in agreement before they did just that with the surprise of everyone in the house. Itachi, said Sasuke seeing his brother walk into the kitchen with two others he didn't know. Hello little brother, said Itachi with a small smile while seeing the two other genin on the team eyeing him, Naruto, and Shizune cautiously. What are you doing here Itachi? said Kakashi with his crutches by the table. Were your backup you requested from the Sandane? A request he chose to ignore for some stupid reason, said Naruto with Kakashi's eyes widening at the sight of the blonde. Naruto. Sensei's son is here, thought Kakashi, as he saw the boy had grown, and was the spitting image of Minato with the exception of the whisker marks. Backup. Why? I can do this without your help said Sasuke with Itachi frowning at him with a sense of disappointment. Not from what I understand regarding your enemy. From the looks of things, your sensei is still injured, and unable to properly train you for the fight that is to come, said Naruto with Shizune already going to work on healing Kakashi of his injuries. Who axed you? said Sasuke glaring at Naruto. Stop it Sasuke. Naruto-san is right, said Itachi with Sasuke looking shocked that he would stick up for the blonde. Our enemies are Momochi Zabuza and an unknown shinobi wearing a Mist Hunter Nin uniform complete with mask, said Kakashi before telling the trio what happened after fighting the Demon Brothers with Itachi already thinking things over in his head. Considering the injuries Zabuza himself sustained, his injuries will be healed by the end of this week at the very least, and I'm willing to bet he'll want a rematch by that time. What has me concerned is the fake hunter Nin since all we know about the person is he or she has skill in throwing Sanban needles and at vital points of the body, said Itachi knowing that it takes skill to hit such points in the neck and knowing it would fool an enemy shinobi. What kind of training have you given them? Said Shizune to Kakashi seeing the man look a bit sheepish. Well, to be honest I've been working on their teamwork up until this mission and had them do tree walking during my time being unable to move around said Kakashi with the trio looking at him with a, are you serious? Look on their faces. That's it. You didn't do anything else the whole time you had this team. Said Naruto, as he saw Kakashi looking more embarrassed by the second, and probably wishing Zabuza had killed him in their fight. The team really needed to work on teamwork and this was a C-ranked mission when we left, said Kakashi with Naruto frowning along with Itachi and Shizun. Saito sensei once said, hope for the best and prepare for the worst, Kakashi-san. It's clear you only did half that. What if they died? Both the team and the client. Said Naruto with Kakashi sighing knowing that was true. I know. I asked the team what they wanted to do and they voted to press forward, said Kakashi with Itachi shaking his head, Naruto sighing, and Shizune was resisting the urge to smack the now healed Junin in the back of the head. Aside from the fact you shouldn't have even let them vote over this kind of, what were the reasons behind their decisions to press forward? Said Naruto with Kakashi turned to look at his students, who glared at him, and knew they didn't want their reasons to be known. Well, Sasuke wanted to prove he was no longer in Itachi's shadow. Sakura wanted to go because Sasuke wanted to go and sigh. Well he just smiled so I took it his answer as a, yes. To the question of wanting to continue on the mission, said Kakashi with Naruto having done a face palming and Itachi's eyebrow twitched. This time Shizune did smack Kakashi in the back of the head. Baka, said Shizune with Kakashi rubbing his head. Your team is only a few months old Kakashi. You should have focused on more than just teamwork, said Itachi with Kakashi sighing knowing the Uchiha prodigy was right. I know. 
It's just. I guess I wanted them to surpass all the expectations set for them like I first did when becoming a genin under Minato Sensei, said Kakashi while Itachi shook his head. You were in the middle of a war when becoming a genin with Minato being your sensei Kakashi. Combat from the war and training during the war helped you achieve your rank of junin ahead of others in these times of peace, said Itachi knowing Kakashi was the level of junin due to the many missions he went on with the training Minato put him through. Point taken, said Kakashi while looking over at Sasuke currently scowling at Naruto for being so close to Itachi. Why are these two here? said Sakura while eyeing the woman like she was some harpy trying to seduce the Uchiha on her team. I'm a medic nin and Naruto felt my help might be needed in the event anyone here was severely injured, said Shizune seeing Sakura look at the blonde in shock and a bit in fear like he was some mass murderer. Naruto. As in the, demon boy, Uzumaki Naruto my mother warned me about. Sakura while Naruto narrowed his eyes at her. That's Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto to you. The information your mother has about me is not only outdated, it is completely inaccurate, said Naruto with the girl scowling at him for denouncing the woman on the civilian council. Father doesn't speak very highly of you, said Sasuke at last and Naruto just raised an eyebrow at him. And why is that, said Naruto while Itachi was watching them interact with interest. Father wouldn't tell me, he just said that you were a bane on Konoha and on the Uchiha clan for what you held said Sasuke with Naruto looking slightly to Itachi and then back at the man's sibling. Well my absence from Konoha and recent actions at your house didn't exactly make him change his opinion of me, said Naruto though it was more to Itachi than Sasuke. Father is not what you call a humble man, said Itachi with Sasuke scowling at the two of them. Don't put my father down. He's the head of the Uchiha clan, said Sasuke defiantly at them. Foolish little brother said Itachi before he walked over to Sasuke and poked the boy in the forehead like he used to do years ago. Ow, said Sasuke while scowling at Itachi. Tazuna, if you are not too drunk right now we need to discuss some things with you in private about your current situation, and how to handle it from a different angle, said Naruto seeing the old bridge builder nodding slightly while wondering how this could get any more complicated. Like what, said Tazuna knowing this new group had something in mind. Removing Zabaza's employer, said Naruto seeing Tazuna's eyes widen along with the rest of the people in the room. You want to kill Gato, said Tsunami while Itachi nodded. With Gato killed, then Zabuza will have no reason to kill you due to the contract being void, and I have a suspicion this businessman does not pay someone unless it's in his best interest. Chances are, he'll backstab Zabuza during the inevitable confrontation, and will make things more complicated if you are weakened from the fight said Naruto simply with Inari, who was Tazuna's grandson scoffing at the idea, and the Kayubi Jinchuriki saw disbelief in the boy. You can't kill Gato. He's invincible, said Inari with Naruto shaking his head. No one is invincible, said Naruto with the boy scowling at him. What do you know? You don't know what suffering truly is, said Inari, which made Naruto's eyes widen, and then narrow dangerously with his eyes flashing from blue to crimson red. What? Dot did you just. Dot say. Said Naruto before appearing in front of the boy and picking him up by his shirt. Naruto. Said Itachi with Shizun looking at Namikaze and saw the eyes flashing two colors with rage flowing right out of them. Shut up Itachi. I don't know what suffering is. Let me tell you a story about suffering child. I have lived a life of pain and suffering before you were even born. For seven years of my life I had no one to comfort me when I was sad to help me after a mob of people beat me within an inch of my life. Hating me for something that wasn't my fault and the powers that be were secretly allowing it so I would be the village's submissive secret weapon. On your birthdays, you got presents, laughter, and a family to wish you, happy birthday. Repeatedly, do you know what I got on birthday? Someone tied me up, in the center of one of Konoha's training fields, bathed me in oil, and set me on fire. O.N. Fire. Do you know what a charred body smells like boy? I do. Mine. I was six years old. The only reason I'm not a charred corpse right now is because that man standing behind me is one of a handful of shinobi, who actually did their job, and stopped things from happening long enough for my healing factor given to me ironically from the source of the village's hatred could slowly kick in. But make no mistake, 
I know what suffering is, and I will not allow some whiny brat say they're the only one in this house if not this very country say no one else knows what it means to suffer, said Naruto before slowly putting the boy down and left the house with no one speaking. Did that really happen? said Tsunami while images of Kaiza being tied up without his arms before his execution came to the forefront of her mind. Yes, Naruto is much stronger than you will ever know. What he holds back is a force of nature unlike anything you could possibly imagine and the people of Konoha have done nearly everything in their power to unknowingly unleash it in the belief they can control such a thing through him. Such as the dreams of arrogant fools. I have nothing else to say on the matter, said Itachi before he looked at Shizune, who nodded before going after Naruto, and help him calm down. With Naruto. Naruto sliced through several trees with his sword. There was enough lumber here to build a small cottage with enough for an outhouse. He had been at this now for several minutes while trying to sort out his emotions over what that weak child spewed from his mouth like he was all-knowing. Tazuna's grandson wouldn't have survived a week living the life of a Jinchuriki. His whole country is suffering and all he thinks about is himself. Thought Naruto while he sliced through another tree with ease. Naruto, said Shizun, as Shizu had to follow his chakra signature, and the sound of him destroying the trees around him. Itachi sent you to scold and keep me calm, didn't he? Said Naruto before sheathing his blade and turned to face her. The second part, not the first part. Though you shouldn't have told him to shut up, said Shizun with Naruto nodding. I'll apologize to Itachi when I get back. It's just. That boy doesn't know what he's talking about and I just got so angry at him when he talked like his life is so much worse than ours, said Naruto with Shizune nodding. I know. I understand Naruto. So does Itachi. We both want to help you and to be happy in life, said Shizune seeing Naruto smile and surprisingly give her a hug. Ever since you came to the fire temple, you have always cared, and guided me more than I could have hoped. I didn't have the heart to say this until now, but in a way, Dot you have been like a mother to me, and. Dot and I want to know if you would consider me your son. Said Naruto with Shizun slightly shocked by this confession, but even she realized that it was true, and couldn't deny some measure of paternal instinct in helping him. The moment Naruto knew Shizun could be trusted, he latched onto her like she was a lifeline, and seeking approval in everything he did. The shinobi monks and Itachi were like surrogate brothers to him with the exception of Bonsai being a surrogate grandfather to the boy. Shizune had been the only woman in his life, who taught him more than just how fight, and gave him guidance like a mother would do for their son. So in a way, she did see Naruto like a son, and deep down Shizune would protect him like he was her own by blood. Of course Naruto-kun, my son, said Shizune with Naruto holding her even tighter and felt him crying. Thank you, Okazan, said Naruto with Shizune finding herself crying too. We should head back to the house, said Shizune with Naruto shaking his head no. You go back. I, I need to be out here a little longer. Maybe I will even sleep outside and enjoy looking up at the stars, said Naruto with Shizune nodding since he had done that at the Shinobi temple to admire the stars above at night. Okay. Just be careful. I'm your mother now so I can pull rank on a paternal level, said Shizune with a stern look though Naruto knew it was for show. I'll keep that in mind said Naruto before Shizune kissed his forehead. I mean it when I say be careful Naruto-kun, said Shizune with the woman heading back to Tazuna's home. The next morning. Morning came for Naruto faster than he would have liked and was awakened by a hand on his shoulder from a young girl a few years older than himself. Long black hair, a nice civilian dress, and a smile that made your heart flutter. But Naruto wasn't fooled. He had developed a sixth sense when it came to people that were not always who they said they were and this girl fit the bill. Her smell was that of flowers, but also consisted of wound-treating medicine, and blood from the injured individual in need of treatment. Naruto had also sensed the girl reach for the area around his throat for a second before moving to the shoulder. You're awake. Good. Said the girl while watching the boy sitting against the tree. Sorry. I was watching the stars last night and didn't have enough strength to walk back to the house, said Naruto, which was true to an extent, and felt it was the best thing to do in case his hunch about the girl was correct. I understand. Though you should be more careful since there is a risk you'll catch a cold being out here all night, said the girl with Naruto shrugging since getting sick was not a problem for him. I'll take my chances, 
Thank you all the same, said Naruto waiting for the girl to speak her name. Haku. My name is Haku, said Haku waiting now for him to return the favor of saying his name. Naruto. My name is Naruto. Pleased to meet you Haku-chan, said Naruto with Haku smiling at him. Well that we have gotten acquainted Naruto-kun, may I ask what you are doing here? Said Haku curiously while seeing his shinobi headband though it wasn't from any village she knew existed. I'm with my mother and we're visiting some friends here in Wave. You, said Naruto, as he knew the best way to lie was speak the truth to a certain extent so it's not even a lie. Just removing certain truths from the whole truth. Then you'll probably get quite a scolding from her for being out this late, said Haku before she let out a giggle with Naruto letting out a chuckle. Maybe. She knows and I've done it before. My Okazan trusts me, said Naruto seeing Haku smiling knowing a certain someone trusted her too on certain matters. That's good to hear. You must be a trustworthy person. Maybe you would like to help me find the herbs I need to heal a friend of mine. Said Haku while Naruto nodded since it would be rude to not help a girl in need of assistance. And a pretty one at that. Couldn't hurt. Said Naruto simply before getting up, dusting himself off and went about helping Haku recover what she needed. I saw the trees you destroyed earlier. Are you a shinobi? Said Haku while picking some herbs and saw Naruto doing the same. Sort of. It's complicated. I am a shinobi, but I'm also two other things blended together, and I don't answer to a cage, said Naruto seeing Haku was shocked to hear that. You don't answer to a cage. Who do you answer to then? Said Haku curiously. The fire daimyo said Naruto with Haku looking shocked at this news. I see. But Fire Country has a shinobi village named Konoha. Why do you answer only to the Fire Daimyo and not the Hokage? Said Haku seeing Naruto smile at her. Good question Haku-chan. But the real question you should be asking yourself is. Dot why is a shinobi of Fire Country helping you gather herbs to heal Momochi Zabuza? Said Naruto making Haku stiffen and her eyes widened while they looked into his intense blue ones. You knew, said Haku seeing Naruto smirk at her. Wouldn't be much of a shinobi if I wasn't. Haku-chan, said Naruto before bringing his hand up and caught the fist with Sanban needles aimed at his neck. You won't get Zabuza-sama's location from me. I'll die before I betray him, said Haku with passion in her voice that told Naruto she would endure all kinds of pain to protect the missing nin. I'm not going to ask you for his location Haku-chan. I'm asking you and Zabuza to leave Wave Country, said Naruto seeing Haku narrow her eyes at him. We cannot. Gato is paying Zabuza to kill the bridge builder and he needs the money to further his dreams, said Haku before she leapt on him and the two began rolling around struggling for the dominant position of being on top. With Naruto barely coming out the victor. Listen, there is another way where we don't have to fight and die needlessly. Gato is not the kind of guy who would pay shinobi unless he had no choice, and from what I've gathered with just two shinobi assigned to this mission, he's not going to pay, said Naruto while keeping Haku pinned though she was still struggling. You lie. It goes against the unspoken rule that clients pay shinobi for their services, said Haku knowing that it was an unspoken rule just like it was an unspoken rule that shinobi don't backstab the client that hired them. Gato is a businessman without honor. Just because it's an unspoken rule to pay shinobi hired for their services doesn't mean he'll follow it. He could easily kill you and Zabuza after the fighting with his other hired help while making something up with there being no proof to dispute it. You've seen him and I've seen pictures of him from Tazuna. The man is a pig. He cares only about money and is a real tight-fisted corporate ass. Do you really believe the man will pay Zabuza when it's cheaper to kill him in a weakened state once the mission is over? Said Naruto seeing Haku stop struggling and look away from him before looking back. What do you propose? Said Haku knowing she should at least hear him out. Remove Gato from Wave Country, permanently. The spoils gained from his hideout I'm sure will more than compensate Zabuza in the end, said Naruto seeing Haku was still unsure about this. How do I know you or the Konoha shinobi watching over the bridge builder won't got back on your word like Gato? said Haku since this could always be a trick. Because I am the harbinger of the fire daimyo. If I were to go back on this deal, then it would reflect badly on him, and I owe the man too much for everything he's done for me. When I give you my word Haku, 
it's as if the fire daimyo himself has given it to you, and personally. I'm not one to break my word. It goes against my honor, said Naruto seeing Haku look at him carefully for any deceit before he let God and stood up with her looking at him. I will talk this over with Zabuza-sama. Though I do not know if he'll agree, said Haku with Naruto nodding in understanding. You know where Tazuna's home is, right? Place something at the front of the house to signify he agrees with the plan for us to kill Gato. Make no mistake Haku, if Zabuza goes through with his plan to kill the bridge builder, then he will be outnumbered, and he will die, said Naruto seeing Haku calculating things in her head. Reinforcements, said Haku concluded seeing Naruto nod. And on Zabuza's level, Kakashi has been healed and now back to full strength thanks to our medic Nin. If you truly value Zabuza's life, then convince him to let us kill Gato, and save Wave Country from further suffering, said Naruto seeing Haku nod since she too had seen the people in Wave in agony. Zabuza is a proud man and there is a chance I will fail to convince him. Still, I will try, said Haku before she took her basket of herbs and began walking away until she was out of sight. You think she'll succeed Kurama? Thought Naruto while leaving himself alone once more. I don't know. Maybe. She cares for Zabuza. Of that, I have no doubt. And you did tell her the spoils Gato had would be theirs to take, said Kurama with Naruto nodding and decided to head back. I know. The question now is, will Zabuza take the alternative? Thought Naruto, as he left to head back to the house, and inform the team of his findings. With Zabuza. You're serious said Zabuza seeing the girl sitting next to him mixing the herbs and stirring them into a healing paste. Yes Zabuza-sama, he proclaims himself to be the harbinger of the fire daimyo, a shinobi, who answers only to him, and him alone. Not even the Hokage can command him and believes Gato will betray us, said Haku seeing Zabuza think this over in his head for a bit. I had heard rumors until now, of someone in the fire daimyo's home gaining special favor, but this, this is something unexpected, said Zabuza not knowing how to handle this new development. I believe him Zabuza-sama. I think we should take the offer, said Haku with Zabuza frowning at her. We can't go on the assumption of some brat regardless of his position Haku. Like it or not, we have to stick with the mission until things change, said Zabuza with the girl looking sad. And what if it's too late should Gato reveal his intentions to be that of a betrayer? Your dream will never come true if you die from this decision, said Haku seeing Zabuza stay silent for a moment. Did he say who was with him? Said Zabuza at last. No, but he said they were at your skill level. Hitaki Kakashi is already healed and will be ready to fight when the time comes. We cannot win should we do battle them Zabuza-sama, said Haku knowing the two of them fighting who knows how many leaf shinobi on the other end would be suicidal. If what he said is true said Zabuza simply. There was no lying in him. I saw into his eyes. He's known hardship like I have before you found me, said Haku with Zabuza now looking at her with interest. Hence why you trust him. Two souls with similar pain. There is a sense of trust and understanding when two people like that meet, said Zabuza seeing Haku nod. Please Zabuza-sama, I beg you to listen to reason, and let them go through with their plan to remove Gato said Haku seeing Zabuza look at her and knew he was debating on whether to listen. You better be right about this brat you're smitten with Haku, said Zabuza though the last part was a form of teasing and was slightly surprised her cheeks colored a little. I am not smitten Zabuza-sama, said Haku while she saw Zabuza smirk underneath the bandages. I'll keep that in mind if and when you see him again, said Zabuza while he let Haku heal his injuries and ignored Haku's cheeks reddening further. Tazuna's house. So you met the fake hunter Nin without her mask. You have interesting luck Naruto, said Itachi with Naruto shrugging. Maybe. The jury is still out on that. In any case, I know she cares deeply for Zabuza, and will do everything in her power to see he isn't hurt, said Naruto with Itachi nodding and knew they had one more day before the inevitable confrontation. Do you know where Gato's hideout is? Said Kakashi knowing if they were going to do this, it would require knowing where, and when to strike Gato. I do. Everyone in town knows where it is. He has countless mercenary thugs watching the place. Real scum of the world and cheap to pay too. The place itself is designed like an old fortress, said Tazuna before telling them where it was located. We'll do a little recon first before making our move, 
said Naruto with Itachi nodding though personally he despised violence unless necessary to keep the peace in the long run. What about us? said Sasuke, who was hoping to get involved in this, and prove he was ready to get out of Itachi's shadow. We are going to stick to training and watching Tazuna until this is over Sasuke. Killing Gato is not part of the mission, said Kakashi with Sasuke scowling at him. Well it should be if they are here, said Sasuke while glaring at Naruto, who just ignored the Uchiha, and focusing his mind elsewhere. No, the mission is to protect Tazuna. Until Gato is killed, Zabuza is still his hired help, and a threat to the client, said Kakashi with Sasuke growling at the idea of being left behind. I won't be left behind in Itachi's shadow. I won't be referred to as, Itachi's little brother, forever thought Sasuke while trying to figure out how to do that. The day went by with the usual routine of Genin Team 7 training, rotating their shifts in protecting Tazuna, and waiting for the possible attack by Gato's thugs. Shizune for her part decided it was smart to stay with Tazuna's family to protect them in case Gato tried to go after them too. Itachi and Naruto spent the entire day scouting Gato's stronghold with the blonde making an army of shadow clones hanged into animals to get the layout of the area around the place before sneaking in when the guards rotated shifts. Naruto then used their memories to draw a somewhat accurate map of the place from the inside and finally learned where Gato slept at night. The smell in the room according to the memory of the shadow clone made it smell of the fat swine, hookers, and sake. It made Naruto wanted to puke since it was nauseous to him and had to fight back the urge before telling Itachi when they would make their move due to Gato telling his two most trusted thugs his plans for getting rid of all his problems in one shot tomorrow. Itachi agreed they had to attack tonight. It had to be tonight. We can't leave a single mercenary alive Naruto. Without their employer paying them for their help, they'll raid the village for whatever will be suitable payment, and destroy just about everything in wave country. It will be like a plague was unleashed and we helped unleash it, said Itachi with Naruto nodding and agreeing with the Uchiha. I know. Let's head back to Tazuna's and see if Haku left a sign for us about Zabaza's decision, said Naruto with the two heading back to Tazuna's to report their findings to the others. And found a message on the door with a Sanban needle pinning it to the door. The demon of the mist accepts the offer. The demon's harbinger. It seems this girl has given herself a title to match yours, said Itachi with amusement in his voice. So it seems, said Naruto while ignoring what he was implying about Haku and himself. Gato's fortress sometime later. Ready Naruto, said Itachi while seeing Naruto nod. Are you Itachi sensei? I know how you feel about fighting and killing, said Naruto with Itachi smiling at how the boy was worried about going against his beliefs. I'm fine Naruto. I will only fight if I have to fight. This is one of those times, said Itachi while seeing Naruto nod and then unseal the bow staff given to him on his 10th birthday by Chiraku. It was a real beauty of a weapon. Forged from one of the branches of a sacred tree Senju Hashirama himself had brought to life not far from the fire temple where many shinobi monks found enlightenment long after the Shodaim Hokage died. The weapon even had seals on it to prevent swords from cutting or breaking upon contact with weapons made of metal. It also enhanced Naruto's own wind affinity so the blonde could easily unleash intense winds with the power to blow enemies away or making wind attacks dense and sharp to cut through their flesh. Let's do this then, said Naruto before the two stout to handle this mission. Konoha at the moment. That damn thing had no right to interfere on the mission Hiruzen said Uchiha Fugaku while looking livid at the Hokage currently struggling to get through the day with all the stress he was under. And I warned you what would happen if I denied the team backup with Naruto around to inspect things here in the village. He was going through the missions I assigned to the teams and considering who was his sensei for the past five years compelled him to take this to your eldest, said the Sandame seeing the Uchiha clan head snarl. I did it for the good of the clan. You agreed to it said Fugaku with the Sandame now scowling at him. Because the boy needed to see things beyond the walls of the village and you wanted to have Sasuke unlock his Sharingan. We knew from Jiraiya's spy network that Wave was in trouble and that there was a high probability of mission being higher than C rank. You thought the danger would force your youngest to awaken his Sharingan eyes so two of your progeny could be considered true members of the Uchiha clan, said the Sandame with Fugaku seething at how the elderly cage was turning this back on him. And what if I did? An Uchiha is made in a trial by fire fashion. 
always has been and always will be for us. Besides, it's a lot better than your way of training potential shinobi to being assets to the village. I don't need to remind you of your failure with the bastard child of the Yondaimi brought into this world by that Uzumaki slut. Said Fugaku with the Sandame scowling at him. Be mindful of your words Fugaku. I would hate to have to punish my two students for killing you for such degrading remarks about those they cared about, said the Sandame with Fugaku scoffing at him. You're one to talk considering your actions against Yondaimi's so-called progeny, said Fugaku with the Sandame's scowl increasing. Something you and most the Uchiha clan are just as guilty of doing Fugaku. I don't need to remind you only one Uchiha among your clan has Naruto's favor while the rest have only his scorn, said Hiruzen with the Uchiha clan head sneering. And I don't need to remind you how your son was ordered back here to run a genin team instead of being at the fire daimyo's palace to guard him, said Fugaku knowing that was a wound aimed at the Serutobi clan's pride. The fire daimyo had ordered Serutobi Asuma back to Konoha when Hiruzen's offspring continued to inquire about Naruto's whereabouts despite the feudal lord of fire country ordering the matter dropped. Chiraku had felt his fellow guardian 12 comrade in arms was finding his loyalty to his Hokage for a father outweighing his loyalty, which was meant for the fire daimyo, and decided to inform the ruler of fire country of this. Hence why Asuma was ordered back to Konoha under the pretense that the man should be in the leaf training a genin team like his father before him. The Sandame wasn't thrilled since his son was able to catch glimpses of Naruto during the past five years, trying to gauge the boy's training progress, but sight alone, and for only a few minutes at best wasn't a real assessment of someone. I am well aware of the fact Fugaku, but let me remind you that Naruto is the one that holds both of us, and our family is in contempt. Itachi has little love for you so don't expect any kind of influence from your eldest in Naruto's actions against Konoha will spare the Uchiha clan. It won't, said the Sandame with the Uchiha clan head staring at him for a moment before leaving. With the man now gone, the Sandame went back to his work, and hoping things wouldn't keep get worse. Gato's Fortress Gato knew something was the wrong the moment one of his hired thugs told him several men went missing and the security cameras to the place were suddenly going offline. The system was state of the art. One of the few things he spent a great deal of money on was security or more specifically his security to ensure his survival. It was why the ruthless businessman had so many thugs on hand to defend him from any and all harm. While they were normally a hefty price to pay for having so many, Gato knew given things were with Konoha Shinobi here in Wave Country that such an army was necessary, and with any luck his army would be thinned out so he wouldn't have to pay as much. As for the hiring of Zabuza himself, was a small dent to his wallet, but Gato would have preferred to have no dent at all, and planned to remove the Demon of the Mist from this world once the man had completed the assignment he signed on for. That way, the money he would pay the missing nin for his service would go to better uses like cheaper security, and a few hookers to make him feel better. Any news? Said Gato with a frown at his hired help. Not yet boss. I've sent a few guys to investigate, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing to worry about, and just some rat chewing a cable. You know this place has a few, said the thug with Gato scowling at him. Then find the rat, kill it, repair the damage done and then kill the incompetent guards not doing their job. Said Gato furiously. Right boss, said the thug before leaving the businessman's office. Incompetent morons. The one drawback when hiring cheap. You get what you pay for. Said Gato with a sneer while wondering what he did to deserve such stupidity. His thought process ended however, as explosions were heard, and screams following throughout the complex were heard. Feeling a sense of worry run up his spine, Gato went to the security cameras to find each of them were going out with each one closer to his office than the last, and told the crooked businessman hostile individuals were headed his way. His worry now turned to panic, Gato rushed to the door in hopes of escaping before his attackers got to him in this cramped office, and cursed the ice bitch for breaking his door opening arm. However, no sooner had he done that did the short man see one of his attackers take a bow staff swing to one of the hired thugs, and cause blunt force trauma to the skull with enough strength to kill the hired goon. Shutting the door quickly, Gato hid behind, and under his desk while hoping the enemy would skip this room to look for him elsewhere. Sadly, it was not the case, as the door was kicked open, off its hinges to be more accurate, 
and the sound of footsteps could be heard from Gatto's position while the frightened man tried to keep the noise of his whimpers from reaching their ears. Not that it mattered, as the two shinobi, who had dispatched most of businessman's army of thugs silently before the more noisy, and violent approached the desk before the taller one picked up the now cowering Gatto. The cutthroat business tycoon had already soiled himself when staring at the dark-haired, weird red-eyed figure, and knew without a doubt his life was coming to an end. But it wasn't fair. He had so much to live for. A business to run. Lives to destroy with a snap of his fingers. People to ruin with his illegal activities in this country. So this is Gato in the flesh. He's shorter and uglier than I expected, said Naruto with his tone of voice clearly stating he was unimpressed with the sight of the little man. Such a waste of a life. To think his money is what caused all the suffering in this country and Kami knows where else he's been before now, said Itachi seeing the man look from him to Naruto. Should I do the honors in slitting his throat or do you? Said Naruto casually with Itachi making a, I'm not sure I'm thinking, noise in his throat. W wait, don't kill me, I'm a wealthy man, that safe over there has enough money to buy a small country. I can make you two richer than you could ever dream of being in a hundred lifetimes. Just name your price and I'll pay. Said Gato desperately knowing the money in his possession could possibly buy him his life and freedom if these two were willing to deal. The two shinobi looked at each other, a silent communication going on between them, and Gato hoped they were considering the offer. His hopes were dashed when they both looked back at him with a scowl and knew what their response to his offer was to sparing his life. No deal said naruto and itachi at the same time with the blonde taking out a kanai and slit the man's throat open with the uchiha dropping the businessman on the ground to die slowly on his own blood it's done we need to inform the others and zabuza said itachi with naruto smiling and make two shadow clones of himself way ahead of you said naruto before commanding his clones to head out while itachi sighed and shook his head i've spoiled you with that jutsu said itachi simply with naruto smirking at him Perhaps, but you cannot deny the results, said Naruto with Itachi nodding and the two left to collect what they needed in terms of Gato's bank accounts knowing the safe filled with money would more than cover Zabuza not getting involved on the businessman's behalf. Besides, the large amount of money they were taking from Gato was going to be used in a far more productive manner, and given to a much more deserving place in need of it. So you're done, said Zabuza as he appeared in front of the two with a heavy mist in case he needed to make a disappearance, and avoid a possible trap. Yeah, we've taken the majority of the man's bank accounts, but what's left is more than enough for you, and Haku to take so don't think we're leaving you with very little in the ways of getting paid, said Naruto with Zabuza feeling a little irked they were taking most of the cash despite how they earned it. How do I know the place isn't rigged to blow once I set foot in there? Said Zabuza as that could always be the case, and didn't exactly trust them. You can't, but it's not since that would be breaking the agreement I made with Haku, and my honor is something I consider to be unbreakable, said Naruto with Itachi nodding too since there was no honor in breaking an agreement. You've been straight with me so far. You could have easily disabled Haku the other day when confronting her about me and then tortured her for information. Since you didn't, I am going to go on a limb here, and trust you too in keeping your word, said Zabuza, as he saw the two nod, and walk away from him. Gato's yacht is north of here. Take use it to get out of the country once you are done taking stuff, said Naruto knowing the boat was expensive and would help Zabuza evade the mist hunter Nin on his case after he left. Tazuna's house. You're back, said Tsunami seeing the two shinobi return stained in the blood of their enemies, and put some pages out from a storage scroll containing a list of Gato's many bank accounts. Here is everything you'll need to get Wave Country back on its feet Tazuna. Use it to make this place great again, said Naruto seeing Tazuna look at the many bank accounts that would make things possible for his homeland be great again. And Zabuza and Haku, said Kakashi seeing Naruto smirk. We left them more than enough in Gato's safe, said Naruto seeing Kakashi nod and was glad that they wouldn't have to worry about Zabuza going after the old man. Just to be sure. I'm going to have my team keep an eye on things, and train harder so this isn't a problem in the future, said Kakashi knowing he couldn't afford to let something like this happen again. Smart move. Since our mission is done, we will be leaving, and reporting back to the Hokage of our success on this part of the mission. 
Oh and Tazuna the payment for the C rank you gave the Hokage is enough. You don't need to worry about paying for the full A rank price, said Naruto seeing the other Konoha Shinobi and Tazuna himself looking shocked by this news. Are you sure? said Tazuna curiously while Genin Team 7 looked angry. Naruto, the Hokage is not going to like this news, said Kakashi knowing the old man was going to dislike this when told. I don't expect the Hokage to like it Kakashi. I expect him take it and with a forced smile on his old wrinkled face. Or have you forgotten that the backup you received here was unofficial? That the Hokage was going to delay your requested support or not send any at all? This is his punishment. I'm also filing another report about this with the fire daimyo so the Hokage cannot lie about this to him, said Naruto seeing the Junin in front of him nod in understanding. Do what you have to do Naruto, said Kakashi with a sigh knowing things wouldn't be good for Konoha upon his return. Hokage Tower sometime later. You tread on dangerous ground Naruto. Using my shinobi for your mission I did not approve any of you going on, said the Sandame with his voice being deadly serious. Your shinobi? That's a bold statement considering who you answer to in the long run of things. Ultimately, every shinobi in Konoha is the fire daimyo's shinobi, and answers to him should he wish to question their actions. Not you. As it stands in the eyes of the fire daimyo, I outrank you, and I can command any shinobi I want for a mission I deem to be important. Or perhaps you would like to explain to the fire daimyo why you didn't send any backup to Genin Team 7, fully well knowing the mission was beyond C rank, and the freshly made squad with no outside experience would most likely die without it. Said Naruto seeing the Sandame narrow his eyes at him and knew the old cage was now seething inside. Whether or not I assign backup for a team is done at my discretion. I felt Kakashi and his team could handle the mission assigned to them regardless of the rank increase, said the Sandame with Naruto scoffing at him. Kakashi took on a dangerous A rank missing Nin, who was at his level, and the enemy had backup as an insurance policy. One that could have easily finished off a severely weakened Kakashi and Genin Team 7 in a heartbeat had Zabuza's subordinate made the attempt. In fact, it was because of my team coming to their aid that they are even alive, and don't get me started on Zabaza's client. The man was going to backstab the missing Nin and finish off the survivors with his army of hired thugs once the battle died down. So tell me Sandame Hokage. Dot how do you feel about the mission now? Said Naruto with the Sandame seconds away from losing his cool. Naruto. Said the Sandame while mere seconds away from calling on the Anbu to just kill the boy and deal with the fallout later. Spare me your explanations. I don't want to hear the excuses of a frail old man. Prepare for the Chunin exams that will be happening in a few months' time. Maybe by then, you will have shown you're not incompetent in being Hokage, and actually be more than just a pathetic paper-pushing bureaucrat, said Naruto before leaving with Itachi and Shizune at his flank. Damn you boy. Damn you. Thought the Sandame while looking at where the village weapon had been standing moments ago. He would tame the boy again. All the Hokage needed was leverage. Konoha Streets. Naruto felt someone following him right after leaving the Hokage Tower with Itachi and Shizune going their separate ways to handle their own things. Whoever it was, they were doing their best to stay hidden for now, and it became clear to Naruto that there was more than one when two more signatures were detected. Each of these three individuals were radiating a small amount of killer intent, as they clearly wanted a piece of him, and most likely for the obvious reasons. Come out from the shadows. There is no point in hiding yourself from me, said Naruto, as he had walked to a training ground, and was met by three Junin ranked shinobi. You have a lot of nerve coming back to Konoha Demon, said one of the leaf Junin of the trio, who Naruto recognized from his earlier years, and suspected the Hokage didn't punish the shinobi that engaged in the beatings he endured. After all this time, you still call me that knowing I am not the fox, and just his appointed prison. I wonder what my father would say he saw you acting like this. Said Naruto, as he saw the Junin in front of him looking furious. Shut up. You're not his son. The Yandaimi Hokage was a great man. He died nobly for this village and your continued existence dishonors him. Said the second leaf Junin of the trio while Naruto remained calm despite the man's words. You're half right. My father was a great and he did die nobly for this village. However, it's not my existence that dishonors him, 
but rather yours, and those that follow you who bring dishonor to his sacrifice, said Naruto seeing them draw weapons and knew this was getting him nowhere. Enough talk. Let's kill him now and claim self-defense. The fire daimyo won't be able to dispute since the Yamanaka clan is loyal to the Hokage, said the third leaf Junin while Naruto drew his sword. You're making a mistake, said Naruto while all three Junin sneered at him. I doubt that. Once we're done ripping your intestinal track out, I'll pay a visit to that little Inazuka bitch you protected from my friend a while back, and have a little fun before my friends join in too, said the second leaf Junin having heard what happened between Naruto, Hana, and the group of leaf shinobi that were trying to enjoy themselves at the Inazuka's expense. Come, so I can kill you, said Naruto with the three Junin charging him and the sound of metal clanging against metal mixed with the cutting of flesh being heard. From his position in the Hokage Tower watching this, the Sandane scowled at seeing the boy come out victorious, and get away with a few cuts currently healing. He had done that deliberately to not only test the boy's skills to get a measure of them, but to use in terms of leverage against Naruto when the fire daimyo came to visit during the Chunin exams, and discredit the blonde. However, Naruto had proven his skills were not only higher than expected, but he had waited until the three Junin struck first, and acted out in self-defense. Even if the Hokage had the boy arrested, the fire daimyo find out about it, and take action against Konoha for defying him. Even the Sandame's two remaining students were powerless to do anything because of the fire daimyo, and life for them had not been fun. Jiraiya had been forced to live in a small home the Hokage had been able to provide and had to run his spy network from there while being unable to peep on women since his medical bills would pile up faster than Tsunade's debts. His inspiration from the needed research was drying up and his ability to produce another book was noticed by all his loyal readers wishing for the next issue. The Sandane knew Jiraiya has asked Tsunade for help in providing him with inspiration for his book, but his teammate refused, and punched him through a wall to further enforce the meaning behind the word. Speaking of Tsunade, she was constantly busy at the hospital, healing patients, retraining doctors, and getting her medical program to help medic nins become part of a squad of reality. As for the debt collectors seeking her out to collect the money she owed, they came by during the past five years, and each one demanding Tsunade pay what she owed. The Sandame didn't know how those debts got paid due to the woman's financial means of paying them off had been reduced to just about zero, and personally he didn't even want to know how she paid them off. Chances are it was through some money from the Senju clan's accounts, but the fire daimyo may have frozen those, or declared the wealth in them forfeit due to the woman's actions against Naruto. The Sandame wasn't sure and felt it best not to pry into the matter should Tsunade wish to lash out. All Hiruzen did know was that the boy was the source of their suffering and the suffering of everyone else in the village hurt by the fox currently sealed inside of Naruto. This is getting out of hand. I expected three fully trained, skilled, and sober leaf Junin to hurt the brat to the point where he would come to me for help in calling them off. I'd then use it to my advantage and convince him I could do that in exchange for leeway with the fire daimyo. Itachi trained him well. Too well. No matter. Once the Chunin exams start, I'll speak the fire daimyo myself on my terms, in my office, and in a setting where I reign supreme, thought the Hokage since last time he had been in the room with the fire daimyo. It had been in a room that made him a weak, old man unable to fight back, but now with his ability to use chakra, and the large library of jutsus he had learned over the years, dot the advantage would be his again. All the Sandame could do now, dot was wait. Chapter 4 Torturous Exams The Chunin exams was drawing closer to Konoha. The feeling of various sensations filled the air among its people. Some of the genin were excited competing in the exams since they had the home field advantage. Other genin were arrogant in the belief Konoha would mop the floor with any genin ranked shinobi coming here from foreign villages to qualify for the advancing rank. However, the shinobi of Chunin, Junin, or higher in the leaf were fearful of the inevitable day the Chunin exams came to Konoha's doors. Not surprising since it could possibly be the last Chunin exams the leaf had depending on Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto's recommendation regarding the village. In retrospection, the shinobi side of Konoha should have put more faith in the late Yandaimi's abilities, and honored the man's dying wish for his son, whether they knew Naruto was his son or not, to be seen as a hero for holding the Kaiubi. It had been a test of their character, 
of their convictions, and the very principles the village had been founded on when the first Hokage helped build the village ages ago with his brother. And they had failed. Failed so horribly. They had betrayed everything the Shodaim, the Nadaim, and the Yandaimi died for when they were leading the village. As for the third Hokage himself, those that had revelations during the coming day of the Chunin exams were unsure how to describe their feelings towards the old cage. He had betrayed their trust, twisted their perceptions with half-truths, and basically tricked them to turn on the Yandaimi's legacy like he was Orochimaru in disguise. The oldest cage in Konoha's history had betrayed his successor and son for the glory of Konoha while betraying the principles of the man who taught him. The third's two remaining students, who were supposedly loyal to Konoha, had sided with him on what to do with Naruto after the ceiling, and it was hard to decide who was worst traitor of all. The Sandame, Jiraiya, and Tsunade. Or Orochimaru. Seriously. They felt it was a close race between them and hard to decipher a true winner to that dishonorable contest. As for Naruto himself, it didn't matter in his mind, and just focused on the task at hand in evaluating Konoha for the fire daimyo. The more he stayed in the village, the more each new form of corruption had been revealed to his eyes, and it sickened him to no end. The harbinger of the fire daimyo had used a henge to look like random people and get an inside look into the people of Konoha. He asked them questions about what they thought of him in a casual way, which naturally got store owners, lenders, and various restaurant managers to express their untold hatred for the blonde. They blamed him for losing favor with the fire daimyo, the Kyubi's attack all those years ago even now, and just about everything else they could throw at him. The kitchen sink included. When asking them if they were concerned about the fire daimyo liquidating the village, the people seemed to believe the Sandame would persuade the feudal lord to change his mind about Konoha, and Naruto himself when the time came to discuss both futures. The people Naruto talked to seemed to have a firm belief that their Hokage was smart enough to convince the fire daimyo that he was mistaken in his decision to show mercy to the Kyubi Jinchuriki and punish the two Sanin in the process. Though why they believed that remained a mystery to Naruto. The Namikaze would keep an eye on things regarding this arrogant state of mind that was Konoha's blind faith in the old cage, if only to find the source of it all, and then crush it himself. The people, mostly civilians with some shinobi as well, had become fat, lazy, and too prideful in the belief that they were unbeatable simply because they were Konoha shinobi. Such arrogance was offensive to everyone. Speaking of arrogance, it seemed one of the members from the Hyuga clan thought he were superior to Naruto, and challenged him to a fight. A Hyuga Neji if the Namikaze recalled correctly, had approached him, and asked if he was in fact Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. All the harbinger of the fire daimyo did was nod before, in a span of just a few seconds, Neji was upon him with an intense look in his eyes, and clearly intended to hurt Naruto to prove some kind of point. However, Naruto had trained too long too hard, and had too much to do now in preparations for the Chunin exams to be remotely bothered by this Hyuga standing in his path. Flashback. Fight me coward. The Yandaimi Hokage would fight me. Clearly you are not the man your father was when it came to battle, exclaimed the Hyuga while Naruto dodged his gentle fist strikes and leapt up into a tree away from him. Arrogant fool of a Hyuga. Coming from a clan with a parent. All seeing eyes, you can't see the truth right in front of your face. If you were a shinobi from Iowa, the Yandaimi Hokage would have easily beaten you bloody within inch of your miserable life, or ended it with his power, stated Naruto with his voice being cold as ice and his stare being just as frosty. And yet you're not doing what he would. That means you are afraid of me. You fear me, stated Neji smugly before he was blasted by killer intent and the shadow form of something demonic behind the Namikaze looking ready to strike. You know nothing of fear boy. You know absolutely nothing about me, yet you assume I am weak, and are trying to make a name for yourself. You assume that because you're of the Hyuga clan that you're better, stronger, and faster when compared to everyone else. I can see it in your eyes as clear as day. You think you've won before the battle has even started. Such arrogance gets you killed Hyuga Neji, said Naruto before he just vanished from his position in the tree until he was behind Neji and the Hyuga's eyes widened at being unable to see it. What? He's faster than Lee. How is that possible? Thought Neji before turning his head to look at Naruto, but the Namikaze had already aimed the back of his fist at the Hyuga when that happened struck the older boy's left eye, 
and given how the eyes of a Hyuga are extra sensitive went on, it hurt a lot. The blow was the beginning of several more violent hits to the Hyuga's body using what Naruto called the Taijutsu version of the Gatosu stance he developed with Saito during the time they trained together. The stance was basically that of someone going into the Gatosu stance, only without the sword in hand, but was still brutal, and could dish out a great deal of punishment on the enemy. Neji himself was unprepared for this, as he was still stinging from the extra pain from the hit to his eye, and bombarded with blow after blow to his body. Until Naruto finally landed a hard right to the direct center of Neji's face that sent the Hyuga with his body slamming into a tree. Before he could say anything, he found the tip of Naruto's sword under his chin, pressing against his throat, and was already drawing some blood while Naruto just stared into his eyes with cold blue ones. Listen to me clearly Hyuga Neji for I will say this only once to you. If you ever and I do mean ever try something like this again. I'll kill you. Do you understand me? Asked Naruto with Neji looking up at him. I, I understand. Namakaze Sama, answered Neji in a humbled tone, yet it didn't fully meet his eyes, and Naruto knew the Hyuga was not fully humbled. Not yet. End flashback. Naruto had not seen Neji since that time they first met, nor did he really care to see the Hyuga prodigy unless it was absolutely necessary, and not a moment sooner. The boy was arrogant due to the Byakugan eyes giving him so much of his so-called power, and the Hyuga clan itself acted like they were gods beyond the reaches of mortal men. It didn't take long to decipher the extent of the Byakugan's powers from what he heard of them when Itachi trained him in the study of combating dojutsu-based bloodlines. The key to the Sharingan eyes being powerless was not to look into the eyes so they couldn't influence a person with their powers. The Byakugan eyes were different though as they saw through the human body, and the chakra coils that made up a network throughout a person. They could see how much chakra someone has, the way it flows, and all the key areas where someone could hit to make it temporarily stop the use of chakra. For Naruto, he didn't really need to defeat Hyuga Neji through any direct confrontation to win against him, though the Namikaze could do that regardless, and show the Hyuga clan's eyes were not that special. If anything, they were lacking the basic need of eating humble pie with a side of crow needing to be shoved down their throats. All of them had to simply be reminded that they were not superior to others and their faces needed to hit the ground to understand just how mortal they really were. Come on Hanada-chan, we're tired. We need to conserve our strength for the Chunin exams. Exclaimed an Inazuka standing beside what Naruto could see was an Abarame, who was also watching the Hyuga girl training against a padded training post with hard strong strikes with a fierce determination in her eyes. Well, maybe not all of them. Her eyes. They aren't like Neji's with a sense of arrogance in them. They are different somehow. There is a sense of something in them. Humility. Purity. She doesn't have that sense of superiority in her I'd expect everyone in her clan to possess. Where do I know her from? thought Naruto while watching the girl continue her training with the two boys, who were clearly teammates, and fellow Genin doing the same. Why are you spying on my team? said a woman of Junin rank from the vest she wore while standing behind Naruto. Spying. I just arrived. I've been walking around Konoha for some time, said Naruto, as he saw the Junin Kunoichi watching him carefully, and sensed her Genin team was now focusing on him. Hey Shino. Is that him? said the Inazuka while the puppy on his head barked about his scent. Yes it is Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. My father gave everyone a detailed description of him upon arriving home after the meeting with the Hokage about his arrival. My bugs tell me he is very powerful. The fact several Junin and Chunin have fallen to his hands is proof of this. Do not provoke him Kiba. We do not need a confrontation so soon before the Chunin exams or any kind of stain on our clan names, Shino stated in his usual stiff voice that spoke of little emotions on his part. I know that. He saved my sister the other day from those Junin and Chunin. As far as I'm concerned, this guy is okay in my book, and more than welcome at the Inazuka clan home anytime. Kiba exclaimed since he wasn't going to pick a fight with someone, who helped his sister out big time, and be an ass to him. I it's him, said Hanada in shock at seeing Naruto. What do you mean, it him? Hanada, did you have some kind of prior interaction with Namikaze-san? Questioned Shino with Hanada looked nervous while staring at Naruto. Before Naruto go taken away by the fire daimyo, 
I met him briefly once when he saved me from some bullies, and was getting beat up. I tried to help, but the bullies shoved me away like they had found a bigger target, and just kept on hurting him until they would grow bored before walking away, explained Hanada while looking down in shame at the memory of being unable to help him. It was why she trained so hard. To never be weak and unable to help anyone like that ever again. You're quite popular with my genin team I see, stated the Junin Kunoichi with Naruto shrugging at her. And you, where do I exactly stand with you? Said Naruto curiously while the woman just smirked at him. I haven't decided yet, said the woman while Naruto just smirked. What's your name? Asked Naruto with the woman smirking back. Yuhi Kurenai. Junin of Konoha and Sensei to Genin Team 8, said Kurenai with Naruto nodding at her and then Genin Team 8 before walking off. They're entering the Chunin exams too from what the Inazuka mentioned. That a big gamble for a team that's only graduated recently a few months ago. The woman may have a good head on her shoulders, but like the other Junin senseis, she's got too much pride, and ego to know such an action is unwise, thought Naruto while Kurama nodded in agreement. From what we both saw regarding Genin teams in Konoha applying for the Chunin exams, a solid amount of them are this year's graduating class, and each of them are acting like their teams can handle the next level of being a shinobi, explained Kurama with Naruto scoffing at the idea of these still freshly minted genin entering the chunin exams and becoming chunin. The only team I believe is capable of handling the chunin exams from Konoha right now is Team 9, but that's only possible if the Hayuga on the team doesn't act arrogant, and drag them down with him, thought Naruto while letting out a sigh. All of them are sons or daughters from the clans. Heirs no less. They will get special treatment from the judges in return for some favor from the clan they help. At least for some of the clans anyway, stated Kurama with Naruto nodding in full agreement. Naturally, we will just have to change that now won't we? Thought Naruto with Kurama grinning behind his cage. Have I ever told you how sly like fox you are? Axed Kurama with Naruto grinning now in his head. All the time Kurama. All the time thought Naruto while planning to do some training at the Namikaze estates. Konoha sometime later. The fire daimyo had arrived in Konoha several days before the first part of the Chunin exams officially started, his mass of bodyguards being much larger than the usual visits for these kind of events, and Naruto wasn't surprised in the slightest. The Namikaze's instincts had always been dead on when it came to suspicious situations, honed from his years of training with the shinobi monks, and they were screaming at him right now to keep a sharp eye out for something. Anything. They were telling him the time the fire daimyo arrival until the chunin exam finals were over would be the time when the third Hokage would try to do something to sway the feudal lord's current opinion of the leaf in the sandame's favor. Daimyo-sama, said Naruto humbly, as he kneeled before his feudal lord, and looked up at the man that had saved him from despair. Rise Naruto. How have things been since we were last together? Axed the fire daimyo with Naruto walking beside the man before handing him a report. They could be better. My reports have reached you since I've been in Konoha. Axed Naruto with the fire daimyo nodding his head. I've received them all, though the situation with Wave Country, and the Sandame's lack of action to save a genin team along with their Junin sensei is appalling. Stated the fire daimyo with his escort following him. He's not the only guilty party. The Uchiha clan head is also at fault here. I suspect he's trying to get his youngest son to awaken his Sharingan eyes like Itachi did, explained Naruto while the feudal lord of Fire Country frowned. Is there any proof to this? Questioned the fire daimyo. Not conclusively, but Itachi agrees with me, and that it is the only reason his father was so opposed to our interference there. It was a do or die mission for Sasuke explained Naruto with the fire daimyo nodding since Itachi supporting such a theory meant such a thing was true. I believe you Naruto. Sadly, I can move against the Uchiha clan without more evidence on the matter, but I can move against the Sandame, and his recklessness after the exams are over, stated the feudal lord of fire country with Naruto nodding in agreement. The will of fire has been corrupted, but there are a few flickers of purity in the flame, and can be saved in a sense if given a chance, said Naruto cryptically. So you are unsure of Konoha's future? Stated the fire daimyo while Naruto nodded. There is corruption on the Hokage's part, followed by the Shinobi Advisory Council, and the Civilian Council. The clan heads with the exception of the Uchiha clan have all seen their decision to believe the Sandame Hokage's lies was wrong. 
The clans themselves are salvageable with the right screening process and seeing which one's side with the Hokage. It won't be easy, stated Naruto with the fire daimyo nodding. Most things in life we want aren't easy, said the fire daimyo with Naruto nodding in full agreement. I also suspect the Hokage will try something to persuade you into changing your mind about me and Konoha in general, Naruto stated before explaining how his instincts were detecting something in the air. I believe you're right Naruto. Stay on your guard until my departure from Konoha, said the fire daimyo with the namikaze nodding. I have one more request regarding the chunin exams and require your blessing on the matter, stated Naruto with the fire daimyo looking at him with a puzzled expression. What exactly do you require my approval for Naruto? Asked the fire daimyo before Naruto explained what he wanted to do regarding the chunin exams. Do you approve daimyo-sama? Asked Naruto with the fire daimyo thinking it over. Yes. Do what needs to be done Naruto, answered the fire daimyo with Naruto now sporting a grin on his face. Thanks. Naruto said before heading off to handle things on his own. Konoha Shinobi Academy a few days later. Wow. All the rookie nine are here stated Kiba while seeing the other rookie nine in the class joined together while Guy's team were nearby. It does stand to reason such a thing being possible with each Junin sensei wish to show up, the other in a form of healthy competition between them, said Shino while Sasuke just scoffed at the idea. Please, everyone knows I'm the best rookie of our generation and there is no such thing as competition. When comparing me to all of you, Sasuke stated arrogantly while Neji had decided to make himself known. That's not what I've been hearing in regards to your big brother coming to save you with the Kyubi Jinchuriki being the one to save your group Uchiha, countered Neji with a smug look on his face showing. As if you're one to talk Hyuga. I heard you were in the hospital not that long ago and the beating was from the Kyubi Jinchuriki himself. Exclaimed Sasuke while raising his voice and getting the attention of everyone else in the room. Keep it down. You're attracting too much attention said a silver-haired bespectacled boy in a corner wearing dark purple. Who are you? said Kiba while eyeing the older kid in front of him. Name's Kabuto. I'm a genin like you with my team participating in this year's Chunin exams. A big turnout this time from the looks of it, said Kabuto while looking around to see shinobi from Iwa, Kumo, Suna, and missed with a few minor shinobi villages having sent at least one team to represent them to show they still existed while not being as large as the five major shinobi villages. How many times have you taken it? Two, three times, asked Shikamaru hoping for some kind of insight into the chunin exams. Seven time actually, answered an embarrassed Kabuto while some of the rookies did not look impressed. Either your team sucks or you do, said Kiba with a grin on his face. Or both, said Sasuke with a smirk on his face. Perhaps, but with every defeat gives me information I put down on these shinobi info cards, and they tell me what I need to know about the people I'm facing, stated Kabuto with a sense of pride in himself while holding the shinobi info cards in hand. Even defeat can help pave the road to victory if one uses it wisely, stated Naruto while entering the room and all eyes now on him. Naruto, what are you doing here? said Choji while not seeing the spiky-haired boy in so long since they had been busy doing other things to run into Naruto. There has been a last-minute change in plans for the beginning of the Chunin exams, stated Naruto while looking at everyone and now had their full attention. Hokage Tower at the moment. What do you mean I'm being replaced as the head proctor of the Chunin exam written test? exclaimed Ibiki while looking at the Hokage in shock. I just received word an hour ago from the Hokage's aide. He's assigned someone else to take over for you during the written test. It is his belief that we will simply show too much favor with our own shinobi during that part of the exam, said the Sandame while not liking this at all since that was supposed to be the case though no one was supposed to know about that. All the clan heirs were taking it this year. He needed the support of the clan heads to counter the slowly growing support Naruto was getting from them after soon let it be known her daughter was saved from being violated by Naruto himself. The means to get Neji to fight Naruto had not been easy, as he had spoke to the boy, and asked him what he thought of Naruto. The Sandame's expectations were met when Neji stated he did not believe the Kyubi Jinchuriki was anything special, regardless of his father being the Yandaimi Hokage, and would love to fight him in combat. 
So the Sandame did a bit of vocabulary manipulation and convinced Neji to embark on such a quest to challenge the Kyubi Jinchuriki to a fight. If Neji won, it would deliver a major blow to Naruto's own credibility, and prove that he was not better off in the fire daimyo's care. If Naruto won the fight, the Sandame could use it to punish the boy for hurting Neji before the Chunin exams when Guy had conveniently entered his team to participate in them two days ago. Sadly, the plan didn't go like the Hokage wanted, and cursed Naruto's ability to find a way around his plans. The Namikaze had openly refused to fight Neji at first, even when the Hyuga tried to provoke the blonde, and had only hurt his gentle fist using opponent to the point where he would still be ready for the Chunin exams. Even if the Sandame could make a case of Naruto being punished, Guy wouldn't hear of it, as he knew what Neji had done, and apologized to the Namikaze on behalf of his reckless student. Damn Guy and his code of honor. I don't show favoritism to anyone in the Chunin exams. Favoritism is for the weak. Stated Ibiki and knew the Hokage also knew it too. I know, but my hands are tied, said the Sandame in defeat. Who took over for me for the written test? questioned Ibiki with a frown. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto did, per the boy's request to the fire daimyo, answered the third Hokage with a hint of disgust in his voice. I see. Those poor bastards, said Ibiki with a smirk, which surprised the Hokage, and did not expect to see the scarred man acting calm about it. What? Axa confused Hokage. The kid got the short end of the stick Hokage-sama. Those with Uzumaki blood in their veins are vindictive. They hold grudges for as long as they live and even beyond life itself when crossed. I've been around Uzumaki Kashina long enough to know that when she was still alive and several people got won her bad side. If Naruto is anything like her, then only the best will get through that part of the exam, and leave with quite a few scars in the minds of each genin team, answered Ibiki with the Sandame frowning. You shouldn't be encouraging this Ibiki, said the Sandame with the scarred man now frowning at the Hokage's words. I never liked being the head proctor for that part of the exam. Scaring a bunch of kids isn't the same when going after a fully grown, fully trained shinobi, and the value of what they may hold in their head before I crack it open. If this kid can do what I do, then I say let him, and make a name for himself, stated Ibiki while the Hokage clearly dislike what he was hearing. Even Ibiki is on his side. Damn it, thought the Sandame while Ibiki left. Back with Naruto. You. You're the head proctor, exclaimed Ino while Naruto just shrugged. Impossible, Sasuke stated while looking at Naruto with anger-filled eyes. Not when the fire daimyo himself makes official, Naruto shot back before he snapped his fingers and the other proctors for the written test appeared. So you're well connected. Big deal. The fire daimyo won't always be around to watch your back or give you what you want, stated Sasuke with Naruto scowling at him. Take your seat Uchiha or your team will be disqualified on my command, Naruto told the Uchiha in a cold emotionless tone. You won't dare. My father will speak to the Hokage and then the fire daimyo about it should you try. Challenged Sasuke while Naruto's eyes became colder. Genin Team 7 from Konoha is disqualified for disrespecting the head proctor. Take all three of them away right now. Stated Naruto with two Chunin proctors doing that since they knew Ibiki would have done the same thing. You can't do this. I'm an Uchiha, the son of the clan head. Sasuke called out while being forced out of the room with Sakura and Sai. Anyone else wish to challenge my authority? Naruto called out for all to hear and got a no via the shaking of heads. This is unexpected. Orochimaru-sama will not like this one bit, thought Kabuto since the plan was to make sound look strong, make Sasuke see the connection Orochimaru had to sound and thus lure the Uchiha away to the minor village where the Sanin would soon acquire the Sharingan. Good. Before we begin, let me explain to you one thing, and one thing only while in this room while I'm leading this part of the Chunin exams. I am the head proctor for this event. That means I am the boss. The warrior chief. I am Kami in all his vengeful glory and will smite anyone here in this room that crosses my path in a way that displeases me in my universe. You so much as fart sneeze, or piss in my direction. I'll make sure that the body part that offends me never works properly ever again. Am I understood, exclaimed Naruto with every genin in the room nodding while scared stiff by the huge amount of killing intent from him and knew the blonde was serious. Damn, 
This kid is a regular Ibiki in the making, whispered one Chunin Proctor with his friend agreeing. Now that we've cleared things up, I want every single genin here to sit down, shut up, and be prepared to take a simple written test that will determine whether or not you have the brains to be a Chunin, stated Naruto seeing the already nervous genin before him obey his command while grinning evilly at them all. Oh yeah, this was going to rock. Junin lounge. What? My team got eliminated right away. How? Aksa shocked Kakashi while one of the Chunin proctors, who had been ordered to take Team 7 away rubbed the back of his head, and explained everything that happened. Naruto did that, said Asuma in shock while wondering how his team will handle the Namikaze. On one hand I don't approve of the Namikaze's action, but the Uchiha did challenge his authority, and called the threat a bluff. To be honest, I am pretty sure Ibiki would have done the same thing, said the Chunin proctor with Kakashi letting out a sigh of defeat. Great. They didn't even start taking the written test and got taken out, moaned Kakashi in agony knowing he could never live this down. I warned you my hip rival. The Uchiha knows nothing of humility and would challenge someone of higher rank to cross him, said Guy in an all-knowing way. So I've been told, said Kakashi knowing Naruto had warned him earlier about that. Hopefully, he wouldn't be the only Junin sensei among this group to have a team fail Naruto's expectations. Back in the classroom. Fail. Yelled Naruto before throwing a kanai at a genin from Mist, who protested this, and the Namikaze threw another kanai at him. This time, the kanai struck the back of the genin's hand, and spilled the Mist Shinobi's blood onto the table. His fellow teammates rose to challenge Naruto, but the Namikaze threw a pair of kanai at them, and struck their shoulders. You can't do this, exclaimed one Mist Shinobi with a breathing mask of sorts on his face. Who says I can't do this? You failed, you challenged me in my decision, and got injured because of it. Now get out of here. Your team's blood is staining my room, stated Naruto in a, I don't give a damn about you, Tonin pointed to the door. It had gone on like this for some time now. Even Sabaku no Gara was intimidated by the fact Naruto was showing zero tolerance to everyone. They were cheating, which was the secret behind this part of the exams, but the fact remained that Naruto saw how easily they cheated, and eliminated only those that were seen clearly to cheat. Naruto went a step further by ending certain genin's methods of cheating, which included stabbing the eye made of sand Gara used to hang in the air, and told the youngest of the case cage's siblings to keep his sand in its gourd. With Neji, the Namikaze had appeared to the right of the Hyuga's peripheral vision, and flicked the boy right between the eyes. The teams from Iowa had been removed within a span of 10 minutes just from the glaring they gave the Yondaimi's son alone. They of course tried to fight him afterwards, but the Namikaze proved he was not to be trifled with, and Naruto reminded everyone of what he would do if anyone crossed him. The indentation of the one Iowa genin's face on the floor and another severed hand now on Naruto's desk was proof of this fact while the security cameras in the room recorded everything that went on to further exonerate the Namikaze of any misdeeds. Now if only he didn't cut my strings to move the mirrors, thought Tenton, as she tried to move them with her fingers manipulating the strings to change the arch of the mirrors so they would show test papers of other genin students still in this before Naruto cut her connection to them. Though there were not many teams left now, it was only Team 9, Team 8, Team 10, two genin teams from Grass Village, a leaf genin team that Kabuto Guy was a part of, two teams from AIM, one from Sound, and that one from Suna. If Naruto kept knocking off more teams left and right, these exams would be short-lived for everyone. Pencils down. Your time is up, exclaimed Naruto before each genin obeyed. What now? Axed Konkuro though it was more to himself than anything. As you might have already known or guessed, the purpose of this part of the exam is not just to answer questions on a sheet of paper. No. Anyone can do that. The real test rather is within the test itself. All of you noticed the questions on this test were beyond most of you and there was no measure of time to study for this. So what do you do when faced with this kind of situation? Simple. You cheat, said Naruto with the teams nodding. But you prevented us from cheating and failed most of the teams in the class. Called out Kiba with Akamaru barking from his position in agreement. That I did. And why? Because your methods of cheating were noticeable. The purpose of this test was to cheat and not get caught. Those that failed, were those unable to do it without being noticed by some civilian, and that is a blunder no one should make. 
Each of you remaining have cheated, but did it in a way where only a shinobi would know, and stop you. This is all a precursor, a prelude if you will to the shinobi art of spying. That is the job a shinobi when you spy on the enemy and learn what they are doing before they even do it. Troop movements, sensitive intel on supplies, people, and other things can be gained by spying. By cheating. The trick is to not get caught or there are punishments for it. When a teacher catches a student cheating, then he is punished, and when a shinobi is caught spying, he is punished as well. Only not by a fellow teacher of the village, but by the enemy themselves, and a shinobi caught spying can be captured before being tortured for information, said Naruto seeing these genin nod in understanding. So the objective is to spy, not get caught, and return to the village with the information we learn before bringing it to our cage. Axe Ino with Naruto nodding. Are to the commander of your outpost, who will then move it up the chain of command, and it will eventually be handed to the leader of your respected shinobi village, Naruto responded back while pleased his information was sinking into their heads. So we should refine our skills to ensure our spying abilities are undetectable to highly skilled shinobi, said Shino with Naruto smirking. Yes, just because you passed this portion of the exam, doesn't mean your skills here are enough to face other shinobi in the real world. They have experience, skill, and means to detecting spies. Konoha, Suna, Iwa, Kumo, Mist, and all the other shinobi villages have had shinobi spy on one another in the past. They all have spies use their skills to counter spy against enemy spies because they know what to look for in the art. My own actions against you was my way of counter cheating against your cheating, explained Naruto while the teams nodded once more. So you were counter spying in a sense, stated the blonde girl from Suna. Exactly. And because you understand this fact, you pass. Naruto answered back with a grin on his face while the genin in front of him were shocked to hear those two words. Before anyone could say anything else, the window to Naruto's right shattered, and revealed a purple-haired woman in very revealing clothing with a trench coat being her only piece preventing anything from being revealed to the point where all the males in the room would get nosebleeds. She had a wild hairstyle with an even wilder look in her eyes and you could tell that this woman would make your life miserable if crossed. The second proctor, the sexy, and dangerous Midarashi Anko is here exclaimed Anko proudly with a banner appearing above her and concealing Naruto from view. Until he destroyed it with a slash of his sword. I had heard the rumors of you being late when making one of your dramatic entrances Anko. For once. Dot the rumors have proven false, stated Naruto while sheathing his blade with Anko turning around in surprise to see her banner had been cut down and saw the Namikaze in Ibiki's place. Where's Ibiki? Axe Anko while Naruto smirked at seeing the woman thrown off by the sudden change in plans. I've taken over for him in this particular part of the Chunin exams, answered Naruto while seeing Anko was confused, but shrugged it off since Ibiki would fill her in, or the Hokage himself if she acts. Fair enough. Okay yo holy crap. You cleaned house. Exclaimed Anko at finally seeing so few teams getting through this part of the test. The others didn't meet up to my expectations, Naruto stated with Anko nodding. There's an understatement of the decade. All right you maggots. I'm the head proctor for this upcoming part of the exam. Follow me outside if you dare. Called out Anko while leaping out the window with an evil laugh that echoed into the outside world. I almost pity them. Almost. Thought Naruto while collecting the papers and frowned when he reached Kabuto's paper. Like a good head proctor. Naruto had done a great deal of research on the Leaf Genin teams entering the Chunin exams, and felt this particular boy was out of place. Why did he feel Kabuto's part in the Chunin exams was out of place? The boy had taken it seven times now and had yet to advance beyond the rank of Genin the entire time despite his adopted father giving the boy more than enough training to go beyond it. Kabuto was smart, was trained well, and yet he hadn't advanced at all to Chunin when taking the exams. Unless, advancing to the rank of Chunin was not his intended goal. To take it so many times should have raised red flags to every higher up in Konoha and yet, there wasn't any kind of suspicion regarding the bespectacled, Genin, or his team for that matter. There was something foul in the air and it was centered around Kabuto along with his team. And Naruto knew exactly where to go for help, though he knew the man being axed wasn't in a giving mood. With Jiraiya, what do you want brat? Jiraiya rudely axed while sitting in his squeaky chair, 
in front of his less than stable looking table, which was holding reports from his spies, and other various forms of information. Information. You have it and I need it. Naruto answered simply while the man in front of him just grinned like he held all the cards. So you want something from me, huh? Funny how things turn out when someone like you needs something from a guy like me. Jiraiya professed in a cocky-like manner. I don't need you Jiraiya-san. Only the information you hold on this table, Naruto once again countered in a tone that told Jiraiya he was not special in the boy's eyes. Oh really? Well maybe I don't want to give you this information. Maybe I destroyed it in a fit of rage for being scorned by my godson, Jiraiya shot back with a hint of anger in his voice. And maybe I consider you a much bigger fool than even I considered you to be upon an action like that occurring. Besides, you have no right to use the title of godson against me like it was some kind of guilt trip weapon to be used against my soul. You scorned me first Jiraiya, remember? Besides, the information I seek could save Konoha in the near future, and giving the information to me willingly might reach the fire daimyo. He may feel inclined to see to it that your living conditions improve significantly from what you have here, explained Naruto with Jiraiya scowling at him. So I give you information and get favor from the fire daimyo. That's the deal. What about Tsunade? Questioned Jiraiya seeing Naruto's eyes narrowing. Yes. That's the deal. Break it and your punishment will make this shack you have for a home seem like a mansion. As for Tsunade. Dot she has to earn such an offer. I'm offering it to you because time is of the essence and I have no other choice. You want to run this by Tsunade. Fine. Do it. But the woman won't get any chance of it with the way she's been glaring at me from a distance or harassing Shizune at the hospital every chance she gets, said Naruto with Jiraiya still looking peeved at him. What do you want to know? Jiraiya acts after a standoff of glaring between the two ended. I need to know everything about a supposed genin living here in Konoha. His name is Yakushi Kabuto. His genin team is currently participating in the Chunin exams right now answered Naruto with Jiraiya raising his eyebrow at the inquisitional request. A genin taking the chunin exams. Why? asked Jiraiya curiously. He has taken it seven times if you count this one. How many genin take it that long and not become chunin? asked Naruto with Jiraiya starting to become concerned by this. You have a good point there. This kid should have been made a chunin by now. Hell, he should be a junin by now. Stated Jiraiya while Naruto just nodded. This has been ignored by the Hokage and his subordinates meant to report such things to him. Either his men are doing this on purpose or, said Naruto with Jiraiya narrowing his eyes at him at the accusation. The Hokage knows and is ignoring it. But, dot why, why would he do that? Asked Jiraiya, as he was loyal to his sensei, but this action was making the Sanin's hair stand on end, and was beginning to question the Hokage's sanity. Ask him when you find out everything there is to know about Kabuto and his genin team. They have been with him since the beginning so they are just as deep in this as Kabuto himself. Dig Jiraiya. The future of your village hangs in balance not only on my word to the fire daimyo, but possibly an outside force trying to crush Konoha, and this so-called genin team is part of it, explained Naruto before leaving Jiraiya to set out on his mission. Forest of Death Central Tower. After five full days, the remaining genin teams qualifying for the Chunin exam finals had made it through the forest of death like Mitarashi Anko had instructed. Though it was not easy in the slightest. Team 10 had qualified by pure luck due to one of the aim teams had fallen asleep near them one night and Eno quickly possessed on of the enemy genin with the scroll before sending him their way. After Eno left the aim shinobi's body once securing the scroll they needed, Choji knocked the genin out and the trio left before their enemy knew what happened. The other AIM genin team was annihilated two days later and single-handedly by Sabaku no Gara when they tried to take Suna's scroll. The sound genin team fell to Konoha's genin team 9 after the latter ambushed them from above with weapon from Tenten, followed by flanking attacks at the hands of Rock Lee, and Hayuga Neji in Taijutsu. Dosu and Zaku were killed in the battle that ensued with Kin being taken prisoner for future interrogations when they heard Orochimaru's name being mentioned by the group before their overall attack. Maida Guy had made it a point to inform his students about Orochimaru and how the man was a traitor to the leaf in a big way. Anyone from outside of Konoha, who was suspected of even knowing the Sanin's name was considered a possible lead to Orochimaru's location, and to be brought in for questioning. 
Her Genin teammate from Konoha. They actually lucked out with one of the grass teams being mauled by a big bear with the red-headed girl with glasses being the only survivor, and had the scroll at the time of their rescue, detainment of the girl by the name of Karen. As it turns out, Karen was more than thrilled to get out of the forest of death, handing the scroll to Hanada, and sensed someone who was extremely powerful in this violent place. The statement was further enforced by Shino, who stated his insects felt the same way, and the Team Plus One decided to make a run for the central tower while still possible. The secondary grass team, as it turned out, was not really the actual team from Grass Village, but Orochimaru in disguise, who had killed the real team, and managed to get into the forest of death undetected. Not surprising since Orochimaru knew all of the inner workings of Konoha, and how to get through the first part of the exams. Once he got to the secondary part of the exams, his breathing room became much larger, and his intended plan had been to target the Uchiha. However, Sasuke's arrogance, and Naruto's order of disqualifying the boy had cost the Uchiha before the written test of the Chunin exams even started. It had been an annoying setback for the Sanin, which Orochimaru found himself had to compensate for on the spot after meeting with Kabuto before giving his spy, and Medic Nin the scroll needed to pass this part of the exam. When the Sanin tried to flee from the forest of death after realizing his plan to turn Sasuke away from Konoha for power was a failure, his old student Midarashi Anko had shown up, and tried to kill him. Not that she had the power to succeed given how just about everything his old student knew was everything he taught her. Anko had yet to add anything new to herself in order to gain some kind of upper hand over him and the man simply preyed on that simple fact. He had taken Anko down with relative ease, amused at how strong she had become, but mocked her for being weaker than him all the same. Needless to say, it got Naruto's full attention when Anko came to the central tower to inform the Hokage of this, and the Namikaze's suspicion of Kabuto was increasing more with each passing second. The Hokage had tried to keep things quiet for now to avoid a massive panic, but Naruto knew better, and suspected something was going on with the third being at the heart if not most of it all. This was a shinobi village. If an entire shinobi village goes into a panic attack over one shinobi, even with that of a single sanin, then there was something seriously wrong with the village, and needed to grow a damn spine. Shinobi needed to be informed and to properly prepare for any surprise attack Orochimaru might soon make against Konoha. The Hokage claimed he knew what to do, but Naruto doubted it, and told the third his actions were threatening the fire daimyo's safety. The Sandame had gotten into a small shouting match with the Namikaze about how to defend Konoha was at his discretion and not even the fire daimyo could usurp that duty. Naruto countered saying that such a duty performed by the Hokage was no longer the old man's job to perform with the fire daimyo in the village. The Hokage was angry at him for that statement, Anko was amused, and slightly impressed by him before setting out to inform the feudal lord of this predicament via shadow clone jutsu. He also made two more shadow clones to speak to Itachi and Shizune about this new predicament. As for Naruto himself, he was going to keep an eye on Kabuto and the team from Suna since Kurama had told him about Shukaku being sealed within Gara. Congratulations for making it this far. Before we begin with the Chunin exam finals, there will be a preliminary exam to determine just who among all of you will be fighting in the finals, and for your village. If there is anyone here, who would like to drop out, please raise your hand to be recognized, and leave with a Junin waiting outside to take you back to Konoha, said Naruto, who had taken over being the head proctor again, much to the disgust of the Hokage, and even several genin that made it this far. It didn't surprise Naruto in the slightest when Kabuto raised his hand, as he expected it, and since the supposed genin didn't have any reason to give up. The young shinobi's reserves were quite high. Junin level to be exact. The fact Orochimaru made it to the forest of death, only to get away, and not leave a mark on Kabuto just proved the boy was not a loyal genin of Konoha. Far from it, Proctor. I'd like to withdraw. I'm really beat, lied Kabuto with Naruto narrowing his eyes at him for a moment. Very well. You may go Kabuto-san, Naruto stated while seeing Kabuto turn around and start leaving with a smirk no doubt on the bespectacled boy's face. That was close. For a moment there, I thought the Namikaze would command the Anbu to subdue me, and order a full interrogation be done, thought Kabuto with a smirk being on his face now. When Kabuto was out of sight, 
Naruto made a hand motion for Anko to come forward, and the special Junin obeyed while the Hokage frowned further. Whispering into her ear, Anko's body stiffened slightly while whispering back to him, and Naruto nodding was his answer to her question. A cruel sadistic grin soon spread on her face, as she stepped back before speaking into her headset, and a portion of the wall moved away to reveal a very large monitor. While this happened, the Hokage frowned at Naruto, a suspicion of what was spoken between the two since it happened moments after Kabuto left the area, and he suspected it had to do with that genin. Let's begin with the first match. When the first two names are called, everyone with the exception of those two names must go to the balcony above, and watch until your name is called, stated Naruto with the names flashing at high speed and at random. While this was happening, Anko was talking to Ibiki, who frowned at what he was telling her, and asking something back. When Anko nodded, Ibiki frowned at hearing Anko's response before checking something, and his frown turned into a deep scowl. It was clear the man's pride had been hurt in letting such a thing, whatever it may have possibly been, get by his usual detecting abilities, and sent a nodding motion to a squad of Anbu under his command before they departed. Now it was Naruto's turn to smirk knowing just what the two key figures in torture and interrogation were talking about. Elsewhere, while this was happening, a meeting between the daimyo, and the various clan heads had been taking place in the room the feudal lord was staying. The only exception was the Uchiha clan, as he felt they were untrustworthy to be in the same room due to the Sharingan eyes casting potent hypnotic genjutsu on some of the strongest minds around, and only cared about their standing with little to no love for anyone else not of Uchiha blood. The clan heads before the fire daimyo had truthfully expressed their apologies to the man for not looking into Naruto's situation sooner and believing the Sandame's lies or the implied lies about the Yandaimi's son. They had wanted to make things right since the boy's return and prove they were not like everyone else in Konoha seeking to kiss up either person for the sake of saving their own hides. I'm pleased to know how repentant you all are in regards to Naruto. While it was not my intention to turn him into a weapon for the glory of fire country, it happened nonetheless with the boy being stronger than any could hope to achieve at his young age. I only wish Naruto had known what it was like to have a descent childhood and be loved by the very village his parents died for so many years ago. It's bad enough the Sandame lied to him and myself, but his own godparents scorning Naruto makes it even worse. Stated the fire daimyo with a scowl on his face while the clan heads nodded knowing some of their own kin had a hand in some things and were properly punished for it. We are well aware of the conspiracy aimed at Naruto. We do not support those that have conspired against him stated Hiyashi while the Hyuga clan elders would need to be dealt with since they had long believed the boy had been a usurper to their own political power they had long had with the daimyo for some time. Naruto's position gave him the ability to have the eyes and ears of Fire Country's feudal lord. You all are here because those among your clan, if not most of them have felt the same as you do, and Naruto has stated there are flickers of hope for Konoha despite most of it having been corrupted by those in power. Those people, who think they can do whatever they want, and usurp my rule simply because they think they know better than I do. Your Hokage is only in power because I allow him to be in charge, but only to a certain point, as I do intend to let someone else take title after the Chunin exams are over, and make the leaf great again, explained the fire daimyo with the clan heads all nodding knowing this was a key point in Konoha's history and continuation in being a shinobi village. Who do you have in mind to take the Sandame's place daimyo-sama? said Abarame Shibi curiously since the daimyo rarely ever chose a cage unless it was under the most extreme circumstances. Like now, Uchiha Itachi, the fire daimyo stated with the clan heads surprised by this news. Itachi. But, he's so young. His father will try to put pressure on him and no doubt the Uchiha clan itself will try to flaunt the young man's position of power every chance they get exclaimed Inoichi with the other clan heads nodding since the man and his clan would do just that. Which is why upon a point to Hokage, Itachi can disband the civilian council, and then reform the shinobi council with younger members that still have plenty of experience under their belt. The clan heads will have the same power as before, but the Uchiha clan cannot use Itachi's position as Hokage to influence their clan in any way. I will not have them bullying people around simply because the clan head's eldest son is the new fifth Hokage. Civilian matters will be handled by a separate council, but they will not have any kind of influence in shinobi matters, and will serve the Hokage. 
Not their own personal interests, stated the fire daimyo nodding. The Sandame won't be pleased with this news. I'm sure he'll want to speak with you before this even happens, Shikaku stated simply knowing the Sandame would try to argue and convince the fire daimyo to keep things as they are right now. I'm sure he does. However, I have no intention of being within 10 feet of the third until it's time to make the public announcement to everyone in Konoha. Before that, I need you all to promise me not to say anything until I make the announcement, and ensure that the transition happens should anything happen to me. Explained the fire daimyo with the clan heads tensing since they suspected what the ruler of fire country did with the third being displeased with the sense that there would soon be a changing of the guard, and wishing to see it stopped. Without any real connection to his involvement in the actual stopping process no doubt. There are those in the village, who will oppose this, and it could lead to a civil war, stated Inoichi seeing the fire daimyo nodding with narrowed eyes at such a possibility. If that does happen Inoichi-san, my forces will intervene to remove those that defy my order, and do what must be done to remind Konoha of its place in my country, the fire daimyo countered and knew the leaf would not have the strength to fight his army of samurai. Each of the clan heads looked at each other, then back at the fire daimyo, and nodded in complete understanding before leaving the feudal lord's presence to handle things on their end of the village. Chapter 5 The Coming Storm Gathers Naruto scowled. Not just scowled. He looked increasingly upset. Why? Because of the end result of the preliminary match between Hyuga Neji and Hyuga Hanada had not been a pleasant in the slightest. Not even close. The match itself was unexpected by all parties watching, as the drawing of names on the board were supposed to be completely random, but Naruto long suspected when the names came up that such a coincidence was not the case, and that someone under orders from the Sandame Hokage had made that happen. He couldn't prove it of course, such an investigation would take time, and time was something he didn't have right now. Hayuga Hanada is unable to continue fighting. The winner of this match is Hayuga Neji, stated Naruto with his sword drawn, the tip of it pointed at Neji's face, and the Hyuga branch family member was restrained further by the other leaf Junin senseis. You dare defend this weak coward. She deserves to die, protested Neji before he was blasted by killing intent from Naruto and the Hyuga saw the boy's eyes become red with slits. Neji, you promised me that the affairs of your clan would not have influence or any part in these exams, said Guy while ignoring the sweat running down his face since he was behind Neji and felt the killing intent aimed at his student. Promises to a commoner aren't worth keeping. Even if you are my Junin sensei, spat Neji while Guy frowned. I'm disappointed in you Neji. If it were up to me, you wouldn't even participate a month from now in the Chunin exam finals, said Guy with Neji smirking. Well then, I guess I should be thanking fate that the decision is not up to you, replied Neji before the killing intent from Naruto increased. No you shouldn't. You shouldn't because the decision is up to me. Due to Hayuga Neji's lack of respect for his opponent, who is also his own cousin, he is hereby disqualified, and the match is now officially ruled a no contest. I enforce this ruling as the harbinger of the fire daimyo and not even the Hokage himself can overrule this decision, replied Naruto while giving the third a look that said, don't even try it, while the Sandame was scowling at him. You can't do this. Do you know how much trouble the Hyuga clan will make for you? This an abuse of power, replied Neji in anger while Naruto kept his cold eyes on him. Unlikely. When people hear how you tried to kill your cousin when she was on her last leg after the brutal beating given, your clan won't have a leg to stand on much less any ground to put that leg on, countered Naruto before he quickly sheathed his sword and caught Hinata before she fell down. Did I? I do well. Naruto-kun, asked Hinata with Naruto smiling down gently at her. You fought with honor and worked hard to get this far Hinata-chan. You could have taken the easy way out by forfeiting or using the cage bird seal on Neji. But you didn't. You stood your ground and fought with all of your being. It doesn't matter if you lost to Neji. You pushed yourself and now know what to do to get stronger. Through this one defeat, I have no doubt you will achieve many future victories. Now rest, replied Naruto before seeing Hinata smile weakly at him and closed her eyes. She will forever be destined to lose. No amount of training will provide future victories like you so pathetically put, remarked Neji while Naruto handed Hinata to some medics and waited until they were gone before turning to face the Hyuga branch member. 
Before Naruto vanished from everyone's sight for a second and was in front of Neji with his hand wrapped around the Hyuga's throat. Neji was surprised he couldn't see such high level of speed, more so when the level of strength behind the iron grip on his throat felt like he was being gripped by the jaws of death, and the Namikaze's eyes were filled with a rage that brought fear to the Hyuga's heart. Naruto. Release him now. Commanded the Hokage, but found the boy unmoving, the various junin around the two trying to break the grip Naruto had on Neji's throat, and failing in that aspect. How does it feel Neji? How does it feel to have your life held in someone's unmerciful grip? How does it feel to stare into the eyes of death knowing that he will take you no matter how badly you pled or beg for mercy? Asked Naruto coldly with Neji's face first going red, followed by purple, and then blue before he finally let go of the dying Hyuga branch member. The boy fell to the ground grasping for breath, his eyes wide with fear, and looked up at the now cold red eyes of the Namikaze. Neji knew that he had escaped death only on a whim because of Naruto had other things to do and killing the Hyuga prodigy was not that high up on his, to do, list at the moment. You have been spared death by my hands twice now Hyuga Neji. There will be no third time. The next time you cross me on a level like this again. I will end you, remarked Naruto coldly before looking at Guy and made a small head motion to get the Hyuga out of his sight. Scary Guy. He's practically at Gara's level of instilling fear if not higher, thought a now sweating Konkuro, as he had heard the rumors about Naruto, and his position within the Fire Daimyo's court. Such an authority figure outranks the Sandame Hokage. Interesting. Perhaps we can work this to our advantage with Tamari. I'll have to run it by the K's cage first, thought Baki, as he saw Tamari watching the boy with interest, and wondered if she would even go for it. If there are no further protests on how I do things we can continue, said Naruto, as two new names quickly appeared on the board, and the Chunin exam preliminaries rolled on once more. Konoha T and I department days later. This information we got out of Kabuto is most disturbing, said Ibiki, as he was in his office with Anko standing beside him, and both were staring at Naruto looking over all of the information the two had gotten out of the spy for Orochimaru. After he was detained by Itachi and Shizun, the two hauled the man into the T&I department. For information extraction from the two best in the field, and brought in Inoichi to make sure the info was indeed truthful. Naruto had spoken to Ibiki and Anko after the prelims. Were over in private. He told them to triple check everything that Kabuto did and make sure that nothing was left to chance that the spy would lie to them no matter how skilled the top two interrogators were at their job. If Kabuto could take the exam seven times and not get caught on their radar, then there was a chance the spy had means of resisting even their skills until a possible rescue attempt was made by outside forces, and not to take chances of him knowing counter-torture techniques. Indeed, Orochimaru is in rice country and running sound village. Though that place is merely one of many bases throughout elemental countries he runs according to the info here. Kabuto isn't just a spy, but a medic nin too, and has been key to Orochimaru's own survival on many occasions. Assisting in his many experiments, killing innocent people, and the failed experiments that followed trying to bring about their victim's potential, replied Naruto, as he read over the info several times, and handed it back to Ibiki. I still can't believe our village's security is this lax. To do this seven times and not get caught makes us look incompetent, remarked Anko with Naruto nodding. That's what happens when arrogance poisons a village Anko-san. You become stagnant. You do not change while others around you do change and wait until an opportunity to strike makes itself known through your predictable habits. Add to the fact that there are forces inside Konoha in key places making it happen only makes this situation worse, added Naruto with Ibiki and Anko frowning since they knew that was true. You honestly suspect the Sandame is involved in this? It makes no sense, questioned Ibiki, as he had known the third since being a shinobi and until now had no felt any reason to doubt the Hokage. And yet Kabuto's confessions from his years of spying and the verification made from his memories says otherwise, countered Naruto with Ibiki sighing and it was clear the man believed in the village though this news was shaking the faith he had in the will of fire. The Hokage wants a report on the matter. He's been demanding it since we started, said Anko knowing that the only reason the third had not interfered personally at any point during the interrogation process was because Naruto had forbidden it with the support of the fire daimyo. Of course the Hokage does. He wants to know what you've learned from Kabuto. 
If the spy has implicated him in his connection to this inevitable invasion by Orochimaru with Suna allying with the Sanin, answered Naruto before smirking at them. You have a plan. Axe Anko with Naruto's smirk increasing. Yes. You will draw up two different reports. One report goes to the Fire Daimyo and the clan heads with the exception of the Uchiha clan since they can't be trusted. The second report, which will be false, goes to the Sandame Hokage, and the Uchiha clan head due to him running the police force throughout Konoha. As far as the latter of the two sides is concerned, you didn't get anything from Kabuto about the Sandame Hokage, and his connection to Orochimaru. You will only learn of the impending invasion, what is going to happen, and that the means of countering it are on a need-to-know basis of the highest level. When the time comes, sides will be chosen, and the battle lines will be drawn with the shinobi of this village having to make a choice on who to side with. The Sandame, Danzo, the shinobi council, and the civilian council are all aiding Orochimaru in his schemes while keeping his two remaining students in the dark about it to have plausible deniability. That way, when the end result happens, which I have an idea of what it is, one of his two students can take the mantle of Hokage without smearing their reputation when their credentials are examined, and no one would question whether one of them was right for the job, replied Naruto with Ibiki and Anko going wide-eyed at this since they pieced it together from their own skilled minds at deducing things. The Sandame Hokage plans to make people in Konoha be reminded of the will of fire by orchestrating an invasion. He plans to be a martyr and is using Orochimaru to do it with Suna being weakened at the same time. If Konoha expels an allied invasion aimed at destroying the village and dies fighting in the process, it would mean his way of doing things could go on unopposed long after a successor was named, concluded Ibiki with Naruto nodding. No one would be able to oppose the Sandame Hokage's way of doing things, even if the next Hokage didn't like it as Danzo, and the councils would constantly remind people of what the old fool died believing. That his way was right and his victory over Orochimaru and Suna were proof of it. The people would rally behind such things and would remove the Hokage that didn't follow it under the belief that the Sandame's successor was not the passionate protector the old man was when fighting the enemy invasion, added Naruto with the boy seeing both Konoha Shinobi not liking this one bit. Such a scandal could bring Konoha to an all-time low. It would make people question whether or not staying in the village is worth it. The shinobi may question if this place is worth fighting for, said Anko with Naruto nodding. After the way the two of us have been treated in the past. How the very people behind it were those we once trusted without question. Do you honestly believe that this village is worth fighting for? Asked Naruto with Anko looking at Ibiki, who nodded that he would keep quiet about her answer, and saw the woman becoming deadly serious. The village itself as a whole. No. But there are a rare few people in it worth fighting and dying for that I know I can trust, answered Anko with Naruto nodding and smiling. Good answer. It's actually the correct answer, replied Naruto before getting out of his chair. What do we do with Kabuto? Or that Karen girl we learned was another spy under the disguise of being a grass nin? Questioned Ibiki with Naruto thinking for a moment. Keep Kabuto locked away in the deepest darkest cell you have here. No one is allowed to see him. Not even the Hokage. If he asks, just tell him that I forbid it, and my word is an extension of the fire daimyo. As for Karen, she is an Uzumaki. Like myself. Send her to the Namikaze estates. I wish to speak with her about siding with family over the snake she serves, answered Naruto before leaving to check up on things with Jiraiya and see if the perverted fool was on the path to redemption or damnation, Konoha Hospital, I'm sorry Hanada, I have failed you, said Hiyashi, as he stood before his daughter lying in the hospital, looking at him with shocked eyes, and wondered if he had been that cruel to his daughter in the past to cause her to look at him with such disbelief. Father, questioned Hanada with Hiyashi sitting in a chair with his head leaning down in pure shame aimed at himself while Shizune was beside Hanada and checking her injuries over to ensure they were healing nicely. I have tried to be a loving father to you my daughter. I have tried and failed to be the father I know you have always wanted me to be in life. That I have always wanted to be in life. I have tried to help you without the clan elders interfering, but I fear their reach is too long, and deep into the clan to prevent any chance of that happening. This is possibly the only time where I can confess this to you without the elders stopping me from ever speaking my mind. They have felt that showing mercy to family for whatever reason there may be one, 
is a sign of weakness, and it is their belief that a noble clan like ours cannot have any weakness. That those that are weak within the Hyuga clan are that of the branch family and are made to serve them without question. I have never embraced this like they have, mostly because of my brother, your uncle Hazashi was a member of the branch family, and your mother despising the cage bird seal long before they both died the way they did. Please Hanada, please forgive me for not being stronger. Forgive this foolish old man you call a father for being so weak that he cannot defend his family from the clan itself, replied Hiyashi with tears running down his face and holding his daughter's hand. I forgive you father. It wasn't your fault. I have seen the sadness in your eyes despite many attempts to hide it from everyone, answered Hinata with Hiyashi crying harder. Just like your mother. You see things that others do not. What most of our clan does not despite out eyes being boasted at the best in perceiving things where other dojutsus do not, remarked Hiyashi, as he smiled at Hinata, and she smiled back. Looks like you have another visitor, remarked Shizune, as she saw the two look to see Naruto standing by the door with flowers in his hand, and a smile on his face. Naruto-kun, exclaimed Hinata happily while blushing at the sight of her crush walking into the room with the flowers. Hi Hinata-chan. Resting well and getting stronger I see, replied Naruto with Hinata blushing further while Hiyashi decided to quietly observe the two along with Shizune. I wouldn't say I'm getting stronger, countered Hinata shyly. Yes you are and on a personal family matter front too. There are many different ways to get stronger Hinata-chan. This being one of them, Naruto explained using the training he got from the shinobi monks at the fire temple. He's right Hinata. Dealing with family matters like this helps heal mental wounds and scar no medical jutsu can heal. Something my former sensei forgot to learn much less teach me a long time ago, added Shizune with a hint of sadness in her tone. Some things can't be taught by someone Ka San. You have to learn certain things on your own. You have long since surpassed Tsunade San on that front, stated Naruto with Shizune smiling at him. Thank you Naruto replied Shizune while finishing up with Hinata and leaving the three to discuss some things. How are things regarding Neji's behavior? asked Naruto with the two Hyuga looking depressed for a moment while he put the flowers on Hinata's bed. My nephew is acting as Anara would say, troublesome in regards to being removed from the Chunin exams, and the elders went to the fire daimyo demanding your own decision regarding his expulsion from the finals be overturned. When the fire daimyo refused, stating that Neji's actions against his cousin were horrifying, and inexcusable to say the least. Dot the elders were irate. They threatened to make this a political nightmare for him and he countered saying his own actions could make things difficult for the clan as a whole, answered Hiyashi with Hinata looking nervous since the elders could take this out on her or her father. They usually did in some manner or another. I take it they were also displeased with Hinata's performance. Questioned Naruto with Hiyashi nodding. Unless something is done, the Hyuga elders will push for her being marked with the cage bird seal, and move to the branch house of our family, answered Hiyashi with Hinata flinching in fear. There might be a way to do that, but, it would be a dangerous route to take considering it would involve me, and the Uzumaki clan, replied Naruto with Hiyashi looking at him for a moment with suspicion and Hinata herself was curious too. You're talking about, a marriage. An arranged marriage approved by both clans between yourself and Hinata, deduced Hiyashi with Hinata blushing and now pressing her fingers together. Officially, yes, unofficially, it would be a means to keep Hinata from being branded with the cage bird seal. We can set it up that the arrangement can end at any time if either Hinata or myself wished it to with both of us reaching a mutual agreement that it should, replied Naruto with Hiyashi nodding and Hinata looked a little sad at first before she realized they both had to agree if they wanted to the arranged marriage contract to become void. Agreed. If you prepare the proper papers, I can sign them, and make it official before the Hyuga elders can make their move against Hinata. Once I sign them, you must take the scroll to the fire daimyo, and have him put his seal on it to prevent anyone from trying to nullify the arrangement. Once the fire daimyo makes it official, it is unbreakable, and not even the Hyuga elders much less the rest of the clan can oppose it no matter how hard they may try, stated Hiyashi with Naruto nodding. There is also the issue of me falling under the CRA to take to restart both clans. Will that be a problem for either of you? Added Naruto with Hiyashi nodding in understanding while Hinata was still blushing. I don't believe it will. Hinata, replied Hiyashi with Hinata trying to keep her composure. I don't mind, 
as long as they don't marry Naruto kun for his status. It should be for the right reasons, answered Hinata with Naruto smiling at her. A rare flower if there ever was one, remarked Naruto with Hinata's face getting redder by the second before she fainted. Just like her mother, added Hiyashi with a sigh. I'll leave you two alone. I have to take care of some things elsewhere in the village, said Naruto before bowing and then leaving. Namikaze estates hours later. I can't believe another Uzumaki exists. Well, half an Uzumaki anyway, said Karen, as she had been held in a cell soon after being taken away by the Anbu after the incident in the forest of death with her stupid team dying via a pissed off bear and was greeted to the sight of one Morino Ibiki. Though rather than be grilled for information about Orochimaru, she had been told about what happened to Kabuto, how they knew everything, and how the only reason she was not in a cell with the spy was due to one of her kinsmen being in such a high position. When she heard that, Karen was shocked to hear an Uzumaki aside from herself was very much alive, well, and in high standing in terms of influence. When Karen asked for the name of her mysterious benefactor by blood, she was floored once more that it was one Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, and that he wanted to meet her at his home in the village. You and me both Karen. It was quite a shock to hear that there was an actual Uzumaki among Orochimaru's ranks. I'm actually surprised an Uzumaki would join his ranks in the first place, replied Naruto with Karen looking a bit sheepish. Well, it wasn't like I had much of a choice. To be honest, I never liked Orochimaru and only stayed because I didn't have anywhere else to go, answered Karen with Naruto now frowning. What about your parents? asked Naruto with Karen looking away. They died when I was very young. When I was a few years old. I don't know how it all happened, only that Orochimaru took me in, and he trained me to be his spy alongside Kabuto. Though I did learn he took my parents' journal before the fire they were in had consumed everything. I was able to get a glimpse of it and learned my parents were in fact Uzumaki and they tried to get in contact with Konoha for some time while they were living in grass country, explained Karen with Naruto frowning further. And they were unsuccessful, questioned Naruto with Karen nodding. They sent a message straight to the Sandame Hokage himself, explaining the situation they were in and wanted to come to Konoha. When they didn't hear back, they feared that something was wrong like their message got intercepted, or the Hokage had yet to read the letter they sent despite the Uzumaki seal on the scroll. A man as old as the Sandame Hokage should easily recognize the clan symbol and act quickly, answered Karen, which made Naruto frown even harder, and wondered what the boy was thinking. That bastard, that evil old bastard screwed my clan over once again, whispered Naruto with Karen frowning. You mean the third Hokage? Are you saying that? that the Sandame Hokage, that he sent Anbu to my family's home and killed them. Questioned Karen with Naruto slowly nodding. Who else knew you and your parents were of Uzumaki blood? The old man sends a team to kill your parents, Orochimaru picks you up soon after, and uses you to be part of their shared master plan for the leaf. The Sandame knew if your parents made it to Konoha, they would learn of my existence, and would have adopted me into the family on grounds of the Uzumaki blood running in my veins made me part of the Uzumaki clan. A clan he has ensured was wiped from the pages of history and the memories of the people within this village all to control me. You were kept alive in the event the fox ever got out and a new Uzumaki was needed to seal him into you with Jiraiya no doubt being the only seal master capable of doing it, replied Naruto with Karen looking at him in shock. I was going to be a Back up Jinchuriki for them. Questioned Karen with a look of pure horror on her face knowing the stories of how Jinchuriki were hated by the villages they lived in even though the villages were responsible for making Jinchuriki in the first place. It makes sense. Only an Uzumaki can contain Kyubi. Whether you are a full, half, or a quarter Uzumaki it doesn't matter. You are a prime candidate to hold a biju, answered Naruto with Karen looking like she had just been stabbed in the chest by a close friend. I, I almost became a sacrificial pawn and didn't even know it, whispered Karen, as she had collapsed into her seat on the couch, and Naruto sighed. I've been there Karen, believe me when I say I know the feeling. But that won't happen now with me around. I've already spoken to the fire daimyo and he's agreed to grant you amnesty if you help me during this time, stated Naruto with Karen nodding. I'll do it, I'm going to enjoy sticking it to Orochimaru and the Sandame Hokage. They think they can manipulate me, you, and the Uzumaki clan. 
Well I say fuck them and their plans. I say we grab them by the balls and twist hard until their nuts fall off before shoving them down their throat. Exclaimed Karen with full-blown anger on her face and in true Uzumaki fashion too. I like your passion though we must do this with precision. Even if we were to face them now, it would not be as impacting as it should be, and still leave room for our enemies to escape the level of punishment we would like to inflict. First, we need to keep you here away from the Sandame Hokage, his followers, and shinobi loyal to them. I've already had the two sound shinobi that lost during the Chunin exam prelims detained and the other made it sadly to the finals so he can't be touched by us. So far, Orochimaru does not suspect we know just how much of his plans we know, nor does the Hokage suspect how much we know of his own involvement, and I'd like to keep it that way, explained Naruto with Karen nodding. You will get no argument from me. Though I would like to get into the fight when the time comes to do the fighting. I may be more of a medic nin, but I can still hurt people, and I know exactly where to hurt when the time comes. Believe it or not, Orochimaru actually did like Senju Tsunade's idea of a medic nin on an assigned shinobi team, and made sure I was one since my teammates were weak. Not that it mattered since the damn bear killed those two before we even knew the animal was upon us, replied Karen while Naruto just nodded in agreement. I'll see to it we expand your education with help from my adopted mother Shizune. She was Tsunade's apprentice at one point. Whatever skill you need to master, Ka-san can help with, and then some so you'd be in good hands, stated Naruto knowing the girl being the full-blooded Uzumaki that she was, would no doubt get anxious while staying cooped up all day with nothing to do, and would need a healthy outlet for all her energy. Really? Thanks! exclaimed Karen happily since she wanted something to do and not let her skills get rusty. No problem, replied Naruto, as he left for his father's old office, and moved to take care of the business with the Hyuga clan to protect the girl that didn't deserve what she got from her family. Jiraiya's home, hut one week later. I found out some things for Yugaki. Things that I never wanted to believe were even remotely true, replied Jiraiya sadly with Naruto nodding since he had seen some of those things himself. I thought as much, still think your sensei is the great man you once looked up to in the past. Said Naruto calmly while looking over the information and cross-referencing it with what he knew from memory. Had you asked me that two weeks ago, I would have said yes without hesitation, and told you to get lost. But now, dot now I can't even say that with conviction in my heart, answered Jiraiya as he saw the boy, who was his student's only son scowling at him, and the image of Minato seemed to project itself behind Naruto with that same scowl. I don't expect you to say it at all. Your sensei is scheming with Orochimaru. He along with Danzo, the shinobi council, and the civilian council are going to benefit from what is to come regardless if the third lives through it or not. If anything, your sensei is going to die a supposed martyr to his cause that is meant to wipe his past sins we've uncovered away, and any future Hokage that succeeds him will have to follow his example or lose the support of the village majority. Your own student, who is my father would never have done that, and we both know my father would have killed the Sandame for what he's been doing over the years since coming out of retirement, replied Naruto seeing Jiraiya looking down in shame knowing the boy was right. I know, I know, but what do you expect me to do? Even if I go against Sensei, the man trained me since I was a genin. I grew stronger because of him and showed my sensei that even a dead last could shine brighter than any prodigy. I thought with Orochimaru out of the village due to his crimes and doing whatever the old man asked of me. I would finally get his respect in outshining my genius for a teammate who has constantly casted a large shadow over me, said Jiraiya in a defeated tone. If he truly respected you, the old fool wouldn't have secretly supported Orochimaru, and let things get this far out of hand. We both know the man doesn't respect you and never will respect you. He is using you Jiraiya. To him, you are nothing more than a tool, and Orochimaru is the son he always wanted in life. He has been playing on your desire for his affection and respect as one of his greatest of students. But I know that the Sandame Hokage will not because it would mean he backed the wrong horse, and the old fool's pathetic pride will never let him do that even at this late stage of his life, stated Naruto with Jiraiya flinching under his truth-filled words. What do you want from me? asked Jiraiya in a defeated tone knowing the boy was right and he had been the biggest fool that ever lived. We know what Orochimaru is planning, 
we know who is going to be where when the invasion starts, and who among the enemy are the biggest threats of all. Orochimaru gave Suna temporary snake summoning scrolls to use in the attack outside of Konoha while Suna has Sabaku no Gara with the one-tailed biju sealed inside of him being unleashed during the Chunin exam finals. Orochimaru is going for a pincer movement in which he attacks Konoha both from within as well as without while everyone in the village gets slaughtered. Suna will no doubt be the main bulk of the combined army since we both know Orochimaru couldn't get many top quality shinobi among the ranks of his sound forces in such a short time. Meaning you my former godfather, are going to attack the summoning team outside of Konoha, and make sure none of the snake summons breach the village's walls, ordered Naruto with Jiraiya nodding knowing the weakness of a pincer movement is one of the sides not attacking when it should. Both sides of such a move needed to work together at the same time in order to create an airtight trap filled with lots and lots of dead or captured people. Consider it done. What about Tsunade? Said Jiraiya with Naruto frowning. Keep her out of the loop for now. She won't believe me no matter how much evidence I bring against the old monkey. I could show her a video of the Sandane doing business with Orochimaru and Tsunade would still hate my guts while calling me a liar. If you do it, She'll ask where this evidence came from, and wouldn't believe you if knowing it came from me. Chances are, Tsunade will tell the Sandane, and the old monkey will change some if not most of the things in their shared plan, answered Naruto with Jiraiya not liking the idea of keeping this from Tsunade. She is the granddaughter of the Shodaim Hokage. I would think that she would defend the village from Orochimaru when the attack happens, countered Jiraiya with Naruto leaning in close to the Sani. Do you really believe that? Or do you believe that she will use the chaos from all of the fighting to kill her former student after Shizune left to help me? Questioned Naruto with Jiraiya sighing again knowing Tsunade better than most. You're right. She would do that. Hell, I imagine Tsunade would move to kill you if she saw an opening, and claim it was an enemy combatant. But she's not going to sit on her hands and knees while the Chunin exam finals take place. Chances are, Tsunade will be there to heal the competitors there of their injuries, and that is in the medical center in a section below the stadium spectator area on the west side, explained Jiraiya with Naruto nodding. I am the head proctor again for the finals. The fire daimyo wants to ensure there are no unfair decisions regarding Konoha Shinobi or any Shinobi for that matter currently assigned to compete. He feels Konoha's current low standing reflects upon him as well and has try raising his own by showing he isn't favoring the village's past actions. He hopes to raise Konoha to some degree though it will have to be earned on the end of its shinobi. Meaning everyone is in for the long haul, replied Naruto with Jiraiya nodding. I understand, stated Jiraiya with Naruto nodding. Good, perhaps there is hope for you yet. And remember Jiraiya, do not tell Tsunade a single damn thing. Reminded Naruto with Jiraiya nodding once again. Not a word, replied Jiraiya before Naruto left his home. Suna teens hotel room. A seduction mission. Questioned Tamari while looking at her sensei Baki like he had just told her that she was the Jinchuriki of the group and not Gara. Yes. Our information about Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto has indeed been proven accurate from our own contacts in the Fire Daimyo's court. The boy has the eyes and ears of the feudal lord of this country. He trusts the boy and has been called the harbinger of the fire daimyo himself when it comes to enforcing his will, answered Baki, as he carefully explained to them who Naruto was, and his title as the infamous Ying Yang Fox. So Tamari has to somehow seduce him and then what? Kill him? Asked Konkuro with Baki looking at him like he was an idiot. No, of course not. Do you honestly think Tamari will survive the aftermath of such a scandal? The fire daimyo would demand her head if she killed him. To kill the very eyes and ears of the fire daimyo, a young boy who has probably the most favor of anyone in fire country is signing their own death sentence. Tamari would be outcast from Suna and Wind Country while having a massive bounty on her head. You would be hunted down by all sides, including our own village, especially our own village to remove the shame we would have endured from it, and have to hand her over to the fire daimyo for the trial with the execution that followed replied Baki with Konkuro flinching at that. So what do I do exactly besides flirt, kiss, and get into this guy's pants? Asked Tamari while not liking this at all. The boy is already famous for his recent actions in Wave Country for taking down a business tyrant named Gato. 
Whoever he marries will have considerable influence on Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto and by that extension the fire daimyo. Yutamari are going to seduce the boy, gain his trust, his influence, and eventually marry him, explained Baki with Temuri's eyes widening and Konkuro's jaw dropping. You want to use me in some kind of mission where I have to marry the guy. What you want me to have his kids too? Demanded Tamari angrily. If it helps us achieve what we need to influence the fire daimyo through him then yes. As I said, you will seduce Naruto, get close to him, even marry, and convince the boy that Suna is a village the fire daimyo should take interest in over Konoha. That we have skilled shinobi and are a wasted resource that would be a waste to ignore, replied Baki with Tamari frowning. They say this Namikaze is like me. Is this true? Asked Gara while Baki nodded. Yes to an extent. He has a biju sealed inside of him. A stronger seal too, answered Baki with Gara frowning further. Wait. We are nearing the day of the invasion with each passing day. Aren't we rushing things a bit with Tamari getting all seductress here? Questioned Konkuro with Tamari for once agreeing with her questionably gay, due to him wearing makeup, brother. We may not get another chance at this before the Chunin exam finals and the invasion comes. If we can influence the harbinger of the fire daimyo and show our might during the invasion, we can strike on two fronts, and show Suna is indeed the stronger village, answered Baki with Tamari not liking this one bit. When do I start? asked Tamari with Baki looking out the window. Right away. Possibly in the next day or two, answered Baki with Tamari nodding and leaving for her room to mentally prepare for this. I have a question. What if the Ying Yang fox fights one of us and screws up the entire invasion? He does have a biju of his own inside of him after all and the Kyubi is much stronger than Shukaku, said Konkuro since it was no longer a secret that Naruto was the Jinchuriki of Kyubi. Which is why Tamari is running interference with this mission. If we can get him to like Tamari, we can make him hesitate in fighting us, and seeing things our way when the time comes, replied Baki with Konkuro sighing. I still dislike us working with Orochimaru. There is something about the guy that makes my skin crawl, remarked Konkuro with Gara silently agreeing with him though made sure no one knew it. Agreed, but the K's cage has stated we are to work with him, and the word of our cage is absolute in this manner, replied Baki with the two boys in front of him nodding. Though one of them would have preferred to kill the K's cage rather than side with him. Namikaze estates sometime later. Naruto was practicing in his family dojo for several hours now with his bow staff, moving it around swiftly, decisively, and with deadly precision he had been taught by the fire temple shinobi monks. As he trained, Naruto thought about Konoha as a whole, the level of corruption that had poisoned it, and just how badly the poison had spread all the way down to the roots of the tree itself. The tree would soon lose all life to it and with enough strength from outside forces or even internal such as the ground around the tree being unstable, it would fall over. The Kyubi Jinchuriki always fancied himself to be a gardener on the side when he wasn't training and in his eyes he saw the village like one big garden with a tree in the center of it. However, without management, and care from the gardener then the tree can die from internal damage that spreads throughout the massive object of nature. Without the tree being strong, the garden would wither away, and die from the same lack of care as the tree itself. Naruto had been commissioned by the fire daimyo to watch over this garden that was Konoha and to ensure the poison in this tree along with the plants surrounding it were protected from it. And Naruto intended to do just that. Naruto-sama, you have a visitor, called out Karen, as she had taken the role of being his maid to hide her presence here and so far no one that visited, the rare few that did visit and rarer few that even knew the truth about it said a word. I'll be there in a moment, replied Naruto, as he dried himself off, and came to see who was visiting him today. And saw it was none other than the Sandame Hokage. Hello Naruto, said the Sandame gently while two Anbu were behind him in flanking position. What are you doing here old man? You're not welcome in my house, replied Naruto with the Anbu going stiff as a board and their hands twitching in wanting to reach for their weapons to use on him for his supposed disrespect. They only stopped because the Hokage had not given the order. I just came to check up on you. The Chunin exams can be a pretty hectic event for one so young. Especially when a shinobi is the head proctor for all three different parts of the exams, offered Hiruzen calmly with Naruto scowling. I've been through worse. You of all people know that, replied Naruto with Hiruzen frowning slightly. 
Naruto. I assure you the horrible events of your life leading up to the fire daimyo taking you in have been a considerable misunderstanding on my part, countered the Sandame with Naruto's eyes narrowing. Misunderstanding. I suffered under your rule, to be enslaved, controlled, and ultimately manipulated to being your weapon all because of a misunderstanding. Accused Naruto with the Sandame smiling nervously. Of course. You have to understand Naruto that the people of this village needed to have some kind of outlet for their pain and suffering. I allowed them that outlet because it was a risk to their mental health, the lives of their families, and I couldn't allow them to turn on each other, replied Hiruzen with Naruto not liking his answer one bit. And what about my life? You couldn't lie to people. You couldn't lie to people saying the fox was destroyed. You couldn't lie to the people and let their hate wash away from knowing the biju they hated wasn't around anymore. Accused Naruto with Hiruzen frowning again. At the time, the truth seemed more appropriate, and I explained the Sandame, but was silenced by an enormous amount of killer intent from Naruto with the two Anbu in the room ready to fall to their knees. Don't you tell me about appropriate. You tried to turn me into your dumb naive pet to heal and fight for a village that hated my guts the moment they heard the truth about the fox being sealed in my stomach. You didn't care if it ruined my life. You didn't care about the village's overall health. All you cared about was controlling the power I had inside of me and to manipulate if not kill whoever would prevent that from happening. Exclaimed Naruto with the Sandame scowling fully and tried to fight back against the killer intent. Konoha has to be the strongest Naruto. Fire Country has many enemies. If we don't do what is necessary, then how can we stay the strongest and protect what we love? I have always done what was necessary to protect Konoha and will do so by any and all means necessary, countered the Sandame angrily with Naruto now snarling at him. And I will do what I must to do what is right to see that you fail. Konoha has a cancer in its governing body. You, I will ensure that by the time the Chunin exams are over. The name Serutobi Hiruzen is one that is not loved, but hated, and scorned like I was growing up. Naruto shot back with Hiruzen narrowing his eyes and it was clear the Hokage was itching to lash out at him but couldn't for fear of the fire daimyo investigating at such a time when the feudal lord could just order the village's liquidation regardless if there wasn't any proof of his own hands removing the boy from play. And how do you intend to do that boy? Axed the Sandame with Naruto smirking now. As you said earlier old monkey, by any and all means necessary, replied Naruto while using the man's own words against him. We will see, said Hiruzen before leaving with the Anbu right behind him. Yes, we will see old man. Count on it, said Naruto with his eyes moving to Karen, who was secretly watching behind a hidden room where one could spy on people without the fear of anyone knowing. I say we kill that son of a bitch right now. Why wait until the Chunin exams when the invasion is going to happen? Questioned Karen with Naruto smirking at her. Because I want to gather all the people connected to Konoha's corruption to be gathered in one single spot. A place where violence and death would soon become temporarily legal through the chaos that will be this planned invasion. When killing a nest of serpents, all the snakes must be gathered together before springing the trap, and making sure none of the serpents escape when you set the nest on fire, answered Naruto with Karen's eyes going wide before smiling. I see. Clever. Does the fire daimyo know about Orochimaru's invasion? Axed Karen with Naruto nodding. Yes. He's sent a message back to the capital requesting additional reinforcements, but that they arrived discreetly few days before, and during the Chunin exams. When the time comes for the invasion to start, the fire daimyo will be ready on his end, and we will crush the invasion along with all guilty parties within Konoha in one swift stroke, replied Naruto with his eyes burning with a fire that startled Karen. Inside those blue piercing eyes was a fiery storm of simmering rage, one that promised to bring about untold destruction upon anyone that crossed him in the past, and just about everyone that would be his future enemy. Karen was glad that she would never be on the receiving end of such a storm or at least hoped she wouldn't be any time in the near future. Karen had no doubt that Naruto would never lash out at her maliciously and only if she had made the first move in betraying his trust would they become enemies. But an Uzumaki did not betray a fellow Uzumaki, as that was taboo on every sense of the word, and if they did, then they were not worthy of the blood running through their veins. They deserved to have it running out of their body and die. That's it for this part if you enjoyed it then like, 
share and subscribe for the next video as it's going to be more interesting and also check out my other playlists hope you would like them too.